The Pac-10 football season is in full swing. Game two of the conference schedule here today in Pullman, Washington on the Palouse. The Oregon Ducks are up to number three in the national polls after an impressive win over the number nine Stanford Cardinal. Oregon falling behind early, but then coming on like a storm, rallying and shutting out their opponent for the fifth straight time in the fourth quarter. Today's game, though, a test to see if Oregon can avoid the dreaded letdown against Jeff Tool and the Washington State Cougars. The Cougs with a late rally last week against UCLA, but it fell just short. Can they pull off a huge upset today, or will the Ducks continue to roll? Oregon and Washington State coming up next. today against Washington State here in front of about 30,000 at Martin Stadium as Oregon takes the field here for their sixth game of the year undefeated so far. Hi everyone, Joe John Sandy along with my friend Anthony Newman. Anthony, hey, this is not the stadium. They're not 60,000 people here, but Oregon excited. They're focused. They're ready to go. But it's homecoming for also for Washington mm-hmm. State. So the fans are happy, and I bet you the players are happy as well. Certainly Washington State has been more productive than they were last year when Oregon blew them out at Austin Stadium. That's because Jeff Tool is throwing the ball a little bit. Eight touchdowns, four picks, had a good day uh, last Saturday against UCLA, threw for more than 300 yards in that game. Joe Tool is a gamer. He loves the game, but the problem, supporting cast. He doesn't have supporting cast that he needs to win football games. On the other side of the ball, LaMichael James. They call him La Heisman. Is it Spanish for the Heisman, in case you didn't know? LaMichael is off to a great start, more than 700 yards already. Boy, we're looking forward to seeing him today against the defense that ranks near the bottom in all of NCAA college football. We're about ready to kick it off. we got the sombrero out. The Ducks and the Cougars here from Pullman. Wow. There is nothing here. Oh, yes, there is. We got Bud Light. Here we go. Here's a good-looking couple. She's a model. Yeah. It's the sure sign of a good time. Just right taste of Bud Light. Here we go. So, you like antiques? Day one storm. And it was beautiful. So look, see the sights that you like. AT&T covers 97% of all Americans. AT&T. Rethink. Possible. Buy a Pantech messaging phone like the Impact and get a Pantech messaging phone free after mail-in rebate. At Vimar, we work hard to save you money every day on the everyday items you need and use all the time. That's why we offer you Owner's Choice values like these. Save on four packs of Dunlop Women's Socks. Get two packs for $7. Save $20 on a Magic Chef countertop microwave. It's just $49.99. Enjoy a Design for Living flip-top water bottle four-pack for only $9.99. Extra liquid laundry detergent is Owner's Choice priced at only $3.99 each. Owner's Choice values, another way to save more every day at Vimart. The game you know and love is back. It's time to play Monopoly at McDonald's. This year, one in four wins. Peel for your chance at over $200 million in cash and prizes. Monopoly at McDonald's. The simple joy of winning.
Back to Pullman, everyone, as we are ready for the kickoff. And uh, welcome to Eastern Washington. There are some broken clouds. They say maybe a little bit of rain moving in later in the game. About 65 degrees, very good weather for this football game. A little bit of wind behind the Cougars at this point, blowing in from the open end of the stadium here. There's our weather. 10%. If anything, it'll be later in the game. It looks a little bit darker to the west. Ducks have won the toss. They've decided to take the ball. Kenyon Barner and Josh Huff are deep for Oregon. And Grasso is going to kick it off for the Washington State Cougars, one of the best kickers in the Pac-10. Nico puts a foot into it, and it drives it deep into the end zone, and Kenyon Barner will take a knee from there. That's the start at the 20. Got to create their own energy today, Anthony. It's not a real loud stadium. The students are out in force. A few Duck fans have driven over. And Darren Thomas playing on the road. Numbers are looking pretty good. 13 touchdowns, 5 picks. Well, if Darren Thomas wants to get the crowd out of it, he has to start fast. And you know the last couple of games, the Ducks haven't started too fast. Also, the pace of that Oregon offense. We'll see how the Cougars handle that. Remember, some of the scores are up. And yardage is up for teams because Oregon runs so many plays and they have so many possessions. A low snap, a little reverse on first down, and there's nobody out there. One block. Gets outside the block. Huff stays in bounds and steps out at the 36-yard line. Look at our McDonald's starting line. It's brought to you by McDonald's. I'm loving it. Up for the first down on their very first play. Thran, York, Holmes, Kaiser, Darian Weems back in the starting lineup. There's LaMichael James at tailback Paulson. And Williams is uh, available today at the tight end spot for Oregon on offense. Here they are, first and 10 at the 36. No running backs this time. The blitz coming. And Flag is down, but also is the quarterback. Thomas sacked for a loss of seven. Well, there was a protection failure right there with the outside linebacker coming off the edge. Need to get that corrected. I would imagine they decline this, Anthony. Alex Hoffman Ellis is one of the best football players on their team. You don't want to let him go. Penalty is declined. Second down. That'll set up a second down and 17. That'll make it tough to get there. Long way to go. Michael now back behind Darren Thomas. They'll give it to LaMichael. He looks for a hole. Still on his feet. Picks up a couple of yards to the 30. Third and long coming up. Starting lineups on defense for the Washington State Cougars. Again, they'll be playing with a lot of emotion here today. Their defensive line has been maligned, and they are injured and have a bunch of new guys in there as well, including the linebackers, Beck, Mizell, and Hoffman Ellis. Not a lot of experience there in the middle of the field. Third down, 15 for Darren Thomas. Plenty of time. He throws it. Drops it short to Jeff Mayo. He's got a lot of room to get. Mayo comes up two yards short at the 44-yard line. And I wouldn't be surprised if the Ducks get on the ball and go for it here on fourth down. That was a good stop by Washington State defense. Bring a couple extra DBs out there. Keep everything in front of you. Let them catch the ball in front of you. And they come up and make the tackle. Nope. Yards after the catch. Ducks are quick on the ball. It's fourth and three on their own 44. They're going for it. LaMichael James trying to get to the corner. LaMichael dives. Let's see where they spot it. It's going to be close. It's going to be close, Anthony. The Cougars are already celebrating like they have it. But I think it's close. That was a great job by the outside linebacker for Washington State to get out there and not allow LaMichael James to get to that edge. They're going to measure. They're still going to measure this for a first down. But talk about a, a lot of energy for this Washington State defense. They're fired up. The fans are fired up. He just ran out of room. I think he's probably about an inch or two short. Stretch it out. And he has the first down. The Cougars have celebrated. <laughs> they run onto the field, and they have the first down. I thought it was close. They're going to review the spot, but the spot reviews are tough. It's hard to tell, you know, where the ball was. Well, I'm still, I'm, 
I'm still looking at the defense while watching this day. There's a lot of energy there. These guys are fired up. They came to play. Can it last for four quarters? But I know they're playing hard right now, Joe. How about that converting it? And the Ducks get quickly on the ball before they try to whistle it. And now there's a timeout. I think Washington State is asking for a challenge. They tell the coaches at the beginning of the year that spot challenges are yeah. a very low percentage of success yes, because are. it's a judgment call of where the ball was when the player went out of bounds. It's one thing if it's just your foot, you know what I mean? Yeah. You're stepping on the line. I know Paul Wolf, the head coach for the Cougars, he's saying he has nothing to lose. Washington State head coach is challenging the ruling on the previous play. So we'll get a challenge at this. You'll see LaMichael go out. So it's hard to say where the ball is. Looks like he, it's a pretty favorable spot, but is there enough to overturn it? And that's the key word, enough to overturn the original call. Remember, the first down is not where you see the orange thing, the orange little carpet on the on the white part. You'll see the orange thing. That's not the first down. The first down is the chain. That thing that LaMichael just landed on, as you can see, it's about a half a yard ahead of where the first down really is. Well, and looking at this over and over and over, I mean, it's hard to overturn this because you can't really get a good look at it, a good view of where LaMichael James landed. That's one of the things I think when fans watch games, they see that little orange arrow, and it makes it seem like you got to get to that as a first yeah. down, but it's not. They usually put that about a half a yard ahead. So the ruling on the field is confirmed, and Oregon has a first down. Now let's see if the Cougars can keep that energy up on the defensive side of the ball. Lost the challenge for the rest of the game. So on the first try, they'll. Lose the timeout, and they're not able to challenge anything from and, here on out. But you got to make question, that challenge. And you question that that challenge so early, but hey, your defense is fired up. You got to find anything you can to help your team win the football game. So the Ducks convert after the holding penalty and the sack. Here's Kenyon Barner looking for a block. Gets one. Kenyon around the edge. Barner across the 40 to the 37 yard line. Ducks going sideline to sideline. It's so hard to tackle these guys in space. And, and that's the thing. You know, when you got blockers in front of you and then you have to get off the block to make a tackle against Kenyon Bonner, that's almost impossible. At the 36 yard line, Ducks spread five out here. Thomas throws right into the blitz. Jeff Mayo will pick up eight on the play. Well, they keep li leaving Alex Hoffman Ellis alone. They're not touching him. He's coming off the corner, number 17 for the Cougars, on a blitz. I know Darren Thomas is going to go back to his offensive line and say, at least slow him down a little bit at one point. They'll give him a gain of nine, second and one. LaMichael James is the tailback. They'll throw it to the outside too high for LT, 2 and a and It'll be third down and one. And Myron Beck, the linebacker, number 13, for Washington State, he would have made that tackle because uh, Jeffrey Mayo tried to make the block and missed the block, and Beck did a nice job of using his hands to get off the block, and he was there for the tackle. That's trying to hustle up. They're waiting for the official to put the ball down. He finally does, and this one's likely going to LaMichael James. There it is. LaMichael with a nice move. LaMichael can't get back to the line, though, and they lose yards, and they're going to go for it again on fourth down. Great job by Travis Long. Defensive end, he's coming down. LaMichael makes a couple people miss. But that's the key to a running back like LaMichael James. Everybody has to get to the ball carrier. It has to be a team effort. 11 guys need to get to number 21. So after second down and one, now it's fourth down and two. You see their ranking. Thomas throws it inside screen. Jeff Mayo has it. Mayo to the 20, the first down to the 17. The Ducks have converted on fourth down twice on this drive now. The hard part about Washington State is the conditioning right now. They're so high energy. They're so pumped up. That gets you tired. And now you're facing an offense that doesn't huddle. Now, now you're even more tired. First and 10 from the 18-yard line. That's where we set here a little bit. Trying to get that running game going. Thomas keeps it. Thomas to the 10. And a flag comes out. Two flags, three flags. A lot of laundry on the field. <laughs> They're going to 
call a penalty on Washington State for leading with the crown of the helmet. That or a face mask. That's a face mask, yeah. I think, Anthony. Personal foul. Face mask. Number 10 of the defense. Penalty be half the distance to the goal. Automatic Ooh. first down. Ouch. Does that head, does it turn all the way around like that? Maybe only in the movie Poltergeist. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> or The Exorcist. It spins all the way around. <laughs> that movie. Look at that score at halftime. Alabama has actually cut into that lead a little bit. They were down by 16. First and goal from the five. Everybody on the right side here, Anthony. Except for David Paulson, the tight end on the left side. Thomas going to roll. A little shovel pass. Caught with one hand by LaMichael. And he takes it to the one-yard line. Yeah, the timing of that was just a little off. Like LaMichael James came back a little bit too much towards Darren Thomas instead of going towards the line of scrimmage, which is the natural flow. Second down and goal from the one. Thomas gives it to LaMichael. He's into the end zone for the touchdown. LaMichael James. The Cougars made him work for it. I think it's the longest drive of the season time-wise for Oregon. Four minutes and ten seconds. Well, a great job by the Cougar defense. I mean, they made some plays when they had to make plays, but not enough. That's a tough thing about the Oregon offense. Again, there's so many play playmakers on the field. Ducks are going for two. A little swinging gate. Trying to force their way in. Do they get there? They do. The two-point conversion is good. Deion Jordan. Deion Jordan <laughs> in that little swinging gate formation. Been waiting all year to see it, and we saw it there. Eight to nothing is the score. Well, Michael James. Ducks on the board, eight to nothing. It's fall sale time at Les Schwab. Incredible savings on the tires you need from the people you trust. Save on passenger performance like truck or SUV tires. Shocks and struts, too. Fall sale, our biggest sale of the year for a limited time at Les Schwab. When the spirit moves you, you really can move mountains. Since 1997, the Spirit Mountain Community Fund has given over $50 million to communities and organizations throughout Oregon. Including nearly $10 million to fund public safety projects. So we just wanted to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The Spirit Mountain Community Fund. We share because we care. It's fall sale time at Les Schwab. Incredible savings on the tires you need from the people you trust. Save on passenger performance like truck or SUV tires. Shocks and struts, too. Fall sale, our biggest sale of the year for a limited time at Les Schwab. Today's game is brought to you by American Family Insurance. Visit AmFam.com or call 1-800-MY-AMFAM today. By AT&T, AT&T, rethink possible. By Bimart, just right for the Northwest. And by Bud Light, it's the sure sign of a good time. Here we go. Ducks kicking after the touchdown. We'll show you the two-point conversion here in a second. The uh, defensive end, Deion Jordan, fighting his way in. Beard's kick. Comes down at the two-yard line. Cougars bring it out. It's Carl Winston, and he goes down just short of the 20-yard line. Here's a look at that two-point conversion. Converted tight end. That's right. Ex-tight ex end. The center snapped the ball right to him, and look at that leg power with Deion Jordan. He's a big guy now. I mean, he's not a little guy. He's 6'7". He's gotten bigger, but he weighs about 260. Taken from the Rich Brooks days, yes, Anthony. Yes, The old swinging gate. That you, yes. you can actually snap the ball back like you're playing in the schoolyard. Exactly. When we're on uh, offense, the ball only has to go backwards. It doesn't matter how you do it. So here's Jeff Toole and the Cougars as they start out. Again, last week they had a lot of success. They'll try to run it here on first down and have a lot of room over the middle on a first down 15-yard pickup 
for the Cougars and Laguan Mitz with the carry. Starting lineups brought to you by McDonald's. I'm loving it for the Cougars. Montgomery, Stormo, Carstetter, Blackledge, Barton are the skill players there. Of course, Jeff Toole, the quarterback, and we just saw Mitz also uh, interchangeable at tailback. So first down for Washington State. Toole going to throw, throws it outside, and it's incomplete. Tool this year, Anthony, as we talked about in our pregame show. He's had three games over 300 yards. His numbers are up from a year ago, and they're having some, some success throwing the ball. The Ducks expect him to throw a lot today. Well, yeah, they're, they're a team that they pass first and run second, but it was kind of odd. They ran on the first play of the game. They'll hand the ball off, and a big stop and a tackle behind the line of scrimmage. Terrell Turner on the stop. Montgomery on the carry. The defensive line for Oregon is playing so good this season, getting off blocks, and he was he was unblocked there, so when he's an unblocked guy, you got to make the tackle. Ducks defensively, as we've seen all year, the Grizzly, number 88, right in the middle. I thought it was Polar Bear. Is it Grizzly? Oh, I think we're going to go with the Grizz okay, Grizzly. Okay, Grizzly, you know, that's right. You said Grizzly. I mean, it could You're be right. Polar. No, it's Grizzly. I think Grizzly's a little more well-known than yeah. the Polar Bear. Plenty of protection. Now it breaks down and Tool goes down back at the 27-yard line. A little coverage sack. That's right. Give the credit to the defensive backs and the linebackers on the back end. Nowhere for Tool to throw the football. That pocket started to collapse, and I think Tool just held it too long. At some point, you have to throw that ball away. Carlos Jr., $6 burger scoring drive on that last touchdown for Oregon. 4-10 off the clock. The Ducks, 27 of their 34 touchdown and scoring drives this year were under two minutes. Cougars made him work. They'll punt the ball. It's a low roll. And it's going to bounce high. There's already a flag down. And Cougars down the ball at the 26-yard line. So that's probably going to be a hold on Oregon yeah. on the gunner on the outside. We'll see. Flags lane at the 50-yard line. Well, that was a nice stand by the defense for the Ducks to come out there and three downs and out. We haven't seen that in a long time by the Duck defense. During the They're kick, usually... holding number 31 of the return team. Penalty will be enforced from the spot where the kick ended. First down. They are usually giving something up, and uh, they held their ground. So that's going to take it all the way back to the 15-yard line. Ducks already with some penalties here to overcome. They've done it once. Haven't been 6-0 since 2002, of course. The Ducks were 6-0 and that year and then just went downhill after that and ended up in the thing that I think is still a figment of my, figment of my imagination, the Seattle Bowl. I'm not yes. sure that really happened or not. <laughs> yes. I don't, want, I don't want to talk about that, that whole experience. That wasn't fun. It's been one of those realities in life. You've segmented the one side of that the brain. It's like, oh, did that, was that a dream? Was it real? First and 10 for the Ducks starting at their 16-yard line now. I guess Wake Forest, is that correct? That's right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, That's what my that was, was like. That was ugly. I don't know, know who they're playing in your dream. And Michael up the middle. He'll pick up four on the play. The Ducks looking for a groove here. Certainly uh, the Washington State defense having to get out there right away, Anthony. Well, it's important for the defensive tackles for Washington State to get on a lot of these tackles. They don't have a lot of tackles under their belt, but they need to slow the Michael James at the line of scrimmage. Here's Michael again. Big hole this time. Here's Michael Slips. Flag is down. And it looks like it might be a hold on Oregon. I saw Mark Asper, 79, off the tackle for Oregon downfield, and I think he did something. Holding. That was a no -no. Offense number 79. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Replay, second down. Another look. When those big guys get in space, the right of your screen, Mark Asper, he's making the block. Now you can't see him, but you'll see him there for a minute. That's a pancake to me. That's not holding. He just took the guy down on his back. So not, that was a nice block. If I'm going to grade that, that's an A. That takes it back and makes it second down and 14. So, again, another penalty. So the Ducks have to overcome a big hole here. Going to throw it outside. Mail looking for a block. Gets one. And gets across the 20. 
They'll pick it back up to where they were before and have a third and about five coming up, a little less than five. Joe, and watch the receivers out front block. Two and A. I mean, the receivers block so well. Scott Frost, the receiver coach for the Ducks, has done a great job with the receivers blocking downfield, springing, springing the running backs and the fellow receivers for more yards. They're down five. Let's see what the Cougars trying to do defensively. They come after them. They'll just rush the four. Over the middle, dropped by LT, and Oregon will have to punt. I don't think he would have had it anyway, Anthony. I think he was short. I think he was short. LT let that ball get to his body. As a receiver, you want to use your hands. Don't allow the ball to get to that body, hit those pads, or hit that belly. It's going to bounce right off. Might have been able to turn up and get the first down if he would have held on to it. But, again, penalties. They overcame it on the first drive, but not this time, yeah. Anthony. Can't keep hurting yourself like that. Jackson Rice to punt. Cougars are right there coming after it. Long snap. And a nice punt. All the way back to the 27-yard line is Marcus Richmond. And Richmond goes down for maybe a yard or two. They'll mark it at the 30. And we'll take a break here in Pullman. Cougars with their second opportunity when we come back. Brotherly love of beer. 1984, brothers Kurt and Rob Widmer turn a home brewing hobby into a vocation. 1986, the Widmer brothers pioneer the American Hefeweizen. To complement its natural citrus notes, they serve it with a lemon, and a legend is born. Today, it remains the definitive American wheat beer. Widmer Hefeweizen, the cloudy beer served with a lemon. I did my research. That's why I'm buying a Toyota. But I want the best deal possible. So I'm looking for just the right time to buy. Hmm. Honey, I think now's the time. It's Toyota's Now's the Time sales event. And right now, you can get up to $2,000 cash back on a new 2011 Tundra. Or get 0.9% APR financing for an amazing 60 months on Tundra. These limited time offers end soon, so hurry in. Hey, Duck football fans, on Monday nights, check out a new weekly show on Comcast Sportsnet, Oregon Football with Chip Kelly, featuring game recaps, insider info, and the most in-depth Oregon football coverage around. Oregon Football with Chip Kelly, Mondays at 8 p.m. on Comcast Sportsnet. Comcast Sportsnet is your home for the NHL with all the hard-hitting, goal-scoring, fast-paced action you can handle. Florida versus Vancouver, Monday at 7 on Comcast Sportsnet. Eight nothing is our score. Defense on the field last time. Cougars uh, had one big run, but then they shut him down three straight. Well, the defensive line for Oregon came through, put pressure on the quarterback, stopped the run. When your D line can stop the run and put pressure on the quarterback, got some good things going on. Here's first down. Now they'll hand the ball off. Still on his feet and dragging for a couple of yards is James Montgomery. And then a late punch throw by. A Cougar, but no flag. Zach Williams. He was tangled up with Turner, number 45 for the Ducks. Washington State to the no huddle. Called second down and seven. Ducks have dominated the last three times these two teams have played. This Washington State team is better than all three of those, I think. There's two of the throw. Pressure coming. Gets away. Now he's got some room to run. And Dives out of bounds for the first down. That was a great job by Tool. Feeling the pressure, didn't panic. Knew where the first down marker was and got the first down. It's a nice job again. The pressure, linebackers, Coach Nick Aliotti, D coordinator for Oregon, sent some to the linebackers, but Tool escaped and picked up the first down. Cougars at the 41. Ducks had a chance to really put him in a bad spot with the defense having been out on the field but couldn't convert after some penalties. Here, inside screen. Duck defense is there. I think the ball's on the ground. Oregon says they have it. Ducks are running off the field. Let's see. The officials are going to unpile them first. 
Some of the Ducks, Kenny Rowe, he's already out over on the sideline. He thinks the Ducks have it. They're gonna unpile them. They're still, they keep trying to unpile them, but they jump in there. And Washington State has the ball. <laughs> Well, Marquise Wilson was trying to get some extra yards. And he wasn't down. He was on some bodies. You see the ball right there. Five-yard pickup. Second down and five. Boy, the, some of the Ducks were sure they had it. Yeah. Comes a little pressure again. Tool throws it. Caught for a first down at the 40 six yard line into Oregon territory again that was a nice job by tool standing in the in the pocket feeling the pressure stepped up through a rifle shot one thing they like to do Anthony is go deep when they get across the 50 yeah they have a lot of uh, long passing plays this year a couple for touchdowns they played a really good first quarter so far with 550 to go Very pleasant for the stop. And the ball up in the middle. Slagwan Mitz on the carry. If Washington, can, Washington State, if they can run the ball just a little bit, that gives them enough balance to keep Oregon's defense guessing. You know, when, when Washington State just sits back and throws the football every play, then it's going to be a tough situation. But if they can run the ball just a little bit, it's going to help their offense out a whole lot. It shortens the game down, too, Anthony. Yeah. I'm going to keep the clock moving. They're second down and eight. Caught, first down. 33-yard line. Tools on fire now. I mean, he's feeling the rhythm. The ball was right on the money. The offensive line's doing a great job providing protection. Well, Tool doesn't have to scramble for his life. Cougars driving. They survived the fumble that they recovered themselves. They used to throw again, and this one caught for an eight, making a seven-yard pickup. Cliff Harris made a break on the ball, but the ball was thrown high enough to get it over his head. Well, yeah, Cliff Harris was coming on this football. And that's, again, another nice throw out and away from the defender. To the 10, 5, touchdown Cougars. And a flag comes in late. I think it's for a horse collar. That was a great job by Montgomery. He hit that hole so fast. And that's what happens when you're running back. By hitting the hole so fast and going north and south. He didn't end up going east and west. Go towards the end zone. Was in the second level so quick that the DBs didn't have a chance to make the tackle. They there took it to no the Oregon defense the area. They did. For I mean, a horse collar tackle. No foul for a horse collar tackle. I mean, they just took it right at him. Oh, yeah. And once again, the Oregon defense, great in the second half this year, off to a slow start here today. Nico Grasso in for the extra point. And his kick is up, and it's good. And the Cougars have pulled it within a point here. After a long scoring drive, it's 8-7 to seven here with 4.28 to go in the first quarter. Hey, Vito's. Hey, yo. Want you say? Hold on. Hey, fuck. Cheesesteak! Coming on! Coming on! What? Yeah, 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 yeah. We got burgers. He wants a burger? What does he want? A burger? Get the cheesesteak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Forget about it. That's the phone. What? What do you want? Cheesesteak? Do you want a burger? Hey, what's he want? Hey, Pop, he wants a cheesesteak and a burger on one buck. What do we do that? We don't do that. We don't do that. The Philly Cheesesteak Burger. Only at Carl's Jr. Sorry I'm late, fellas. Oh, that's cool. Whoa, 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 what? 
fuck is that? Huh? How come my dad wasn't like that? Well, this is just us then. Yeah, it's also something we do. Yeah, 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 who else is in the so-called us? Man, I don't know. There's a lot of us. <laughs> yeah. Ask your friends what it's like to be part of a group that's 40 million strong. State Farm insures more drivers than Geico and Progressive combined. It's no surprise with so many ways to save and discounts of up to 40%. So call an agent at 1-800-STATE-FARM or go online. traffic the 271 horsepower accord cross tour from honda eight to seven oregon with the lead here in the first quarter hey folks make sure to head down to the cooler restaurant and bar every tuesday seven to eight coach kelly's down there with jerry allen it's tailgate tuesday have a great time down mlk at the cooler i know the cooler's packed today full of folks watch, watching a special welcome to sarah dean sean ekstrom and James Waddell at the cooler along with Jonas Kungis. And at the cooler tonight, hope you all have a good time there at the cooler. Watching today's Oregon football game against the Cougars. Kenyon Barner just gets blasted, fumbles the ball. The Cougars pick it up and have the ball at the 10-yard line. And Barner's still down. That was a collision. And that's how you get the fans fired up and the Cougars football team fired up. With hits like that, it's not a good start for the Ducks. Penalties and turnovers, and boy, let's hope that Kenyon is okay. And I don't think Kenyon even saw the Cougar that came down that took the shot right to the head, right across the jaw area, the face mask. He's still down. That's not good the way they're looking at him right now. Tell you what, Anthony, Oregon better wake up here in a hurry with the excitement and enthusiasm in the stadium. I mean, the people are jacked up right now. Well, with hits like that, you should be jacked up for the Washington State Cougars. I mean, their fans are fired up. The stadium was not all that full, and then uh, I think as the Cougars start playing, the dorms are all right around the stadium. I mean, people are still pouring into the stadium as they are sensing something special here today in Pullman. Hopefully Kenyon's going to be okay. And things like this, when your fellow teammate gets blasted like this, it wakes you up as well. Part of what happened is Marvin Johnson, in trying to block, actually made him go faster, accelerated the it, defender the into Kenyon. Yeah. And I think they need to... They're going to get him out of here over to the... Hospital pretty soon, I think. They're talking about getting the ambulance out here right away, so this may be more serious than we thought, Anthony. Initially, Kenyon moved a little bit, and then he just laid there a little bit like Chris Owusu did last week. Still down there looking at him. They have him on his back. Chip Kelly's out there as well. A lot of times, you know, they take a lot of precaution, Anthony. They take precaution with the kids to make sure that they're okay. If someone feels some numbness. Or oh, yeah. Well, I mean, Kenyon didn't see... The kickoff man come down there and just looked like he put it right on his, his face mask. And now Kenyon's mom and dad are down on the field too. That's his father. Chip Kelly, I think, spending some time trying to calm the parents down a little bit. 
that maybe there's a precautionary. Of course, I'm being as optimistic as possible. The trainers and everybody are out there. Michael James is, is very upset. They're very close friends. They work out together. They fellow running backs. And Game is so secondary at this point. Oh, yes. And uh, we're very hopeful this is just precautionary. Seasons can turn on a dime. And well, Mike Bellotta used to say all the time that this is not a contact sport, it's a collision sport. And you got guys weighing, you know, 230 pounds and 200 pounds colliding at full speed. And watch Kenyon's helmet, his face mask. Looks like what a helmet right to the face mask. Turned his he turned his helmet almost backwards. So there could be a, I've seen guys have a broken jaw because of that. We have some people down there trying to get any information possible to assure you that Kenyon's going to be okay. Can't quite tell. The fans are reacting to something on the other side. But maybe Kenyon is sat is sitting up. I'm not I just can't tell from here. His helmet is off. I think you see his arm there. He's sitting up. You see him sitting up now. And they're gonna help him up onto his own feet, so that's great news. With his dad and his mom. Part of what made that hit so big, Anthony, was the acceleration off the block. So it wasn't just a man running at his top speed. It was that plus something. Yeah, yeah. And the defender's helmet hit, you know, Kenyon right across the face. And again, I don't think Kenyon even saw him. He was trying to cut back inside. So they're going to go ahead and take him in for further observation. Uh, it's obviously very good news that he was able to stand up on his own power there with uh, onto his feet, move his limbs. There's LaMichael. Again, these kids are... You they're know, close. They're very 19 close. years old. Very close family. Let's not forget that part. They're 19. 18 and 19-year-old sophomore. They do everything together on the field and off the field. I, I remember playing with guys and Derek Lavelle and, you know... Bill Musgrave, all those guys. You're, you're close. You build a, a bond like no other. And if you see your fellow guy go down like that, it's going to shake you up a little bit. It's going to make you angry. And I, and I, from an ex-player, I know the Ducks right now, they're a little angry. They're a little frustrated. Does, that, does it wake them up a little bit? And they still have to play a football game. Make sure Kenyon's okay, but is that the spark that wakes this duck offense and defense up? Cougars will have the ball at the six-yard line. And Kenyon Barner will head to the medical center here in Pullman. And just get checked out. They'll go through the tests. Yeah. Kenyon, a very popular player, of course, on this team. Very 
likable, handsome young man. His mom and his father are with him right now, so he's receiving the best care possible and has loved ones near him to support. And we'll be optimistic and hope for the best, Anthony, as he heads over to be checked out. Well, it was a good sign that, you know, he stood up. His father and mother gave him a hug. And that's a great sign. You know, he could still be laying down on the ground right now, not moving. So that's uh, it's a positive. So as the uh, ambulance pulls away here out of Martin Stadium, now the Ducks have to refocus with the Cougars at the six-yard line after the fumble, and they have a chance to take the lead here in the first quarter. Again, the Ducks starting slow as they have uh, all season long, Anthony, yeah. except for, well, against New Mexico, they threw an interception. But uh, certainly Portland against State Tennessee. Only <laughs> yeah, only Portland yeah. State. Yeah. Tennessee, Stanford, Arizona State. And now here are the Cougars with a lot of momentum. Picking up a turnover. Ducks have turned the ball over now and also committed some big penalties early in the game. Cougars now with a chance to take the lead. They'll run it on first down. And to the one-yard line goes Laguan Mitz. No, they'll bring Mitz down here in the, in the goal line area. He's a big running back. He's about 230 pounds, unlike James Montgomery, who's a, about 190. Mitz is a load to bring down. Down to the one-yard line. 350 in the first quarter. They'll run it again. And over the line or not, the ball is loose. It's a touchdown. Touchdown for Lugwan Mitz. And the Cougars lead the number three Oregon Ducks here in the first quarter. Well, you look on paper and you think, hey, Ducks are the, are the better football team, but this is why you play the game. You gotta come out and you gotta play. You gotta execute. They're gonna review it, it looks like. They're gonna review that. It is under review. So they'll review it. Did his knees hit the ground, Joe, before he uh the I ball crossed the crossed the line? I don't know, and the ball might have been out before he crossed the line. Another look at it. We'll see. This won't give us the line look, but we can at least see about whether the ball did come out. Not the ball, I think he had it and he yeah. was over the line. So it's a touchdown. Here's kind of the best look at it here. So there it is. That's a touchdown. And this will stand. And Nico Grasso will be in to kick the extra point. Well, Anthony, here's a game. Everybody assumed the Ducks would come in and just roll. They were ahead 42 to nothing at halftime last year. But there's something different about this Washington State team from the ones we've seen before. They're feisty, you know. They have a, a couple of years under Paul Wolf's his, uh, head coaching duties. They're understanding what, they, uh, what the offense is trying to do, and they understand what the defense is trying to do. And these players are becoming better football players because of game experience. They're young guys. Matthew, the ruling on the field stands. Touchdown. The other part, Anthony, is the belief that it gives you. You know, hey, we're knocking them confidence. off the ball. It's confidence. We're stopping them on defense. Yeah. You get a lot of uh, belief that you can do it. <laughs> Extra point attempt is up and good, and Washington State has the lead here. 14-8 to eight with 3.40 to go in the first quarter. So two touchdowns for Washington State, which is... Uh, more than they've scored in the last two years of games against Oregon. And you got to remember that when you're the number three team in the country, everybody's going to bring their best. I mean, they're going to play their best and really play their best in the first half and lay it all on the line. So Oregon has to withhold that and stand up and, and right now fight back. Doug football is presented in high definition by the Ron Tonkin family of dealerships for the love of cars. Oh, 
So Huff will go back now instead of Kenyon Barner. Scott Grady as well. Along with Scott Grady from Tigard High School. So Josh Huff and Scott Grady are deep now for Oregon. And no question that even though this game is not on national television, the nation's attention is now starting to focus on Pullman Washington here early. Last week, the Ducks were down 21 to 3 and went on a tear. Rossi's kick high. It's going to be deep into the end zone. And Huff wants to bring it out and has to take a knee. And again, Oregon with field position deep in their own territory. Haven't been able to really flip the field yet. Start the touchdown, but penalties and... Well, that's right. Penalties. Mistakes. I mean, mistakes that Oregon on offense. I mean, they really beat themselves uh, when the offense had the ball. Really, the Cougars didn't do anything to, to stop Oregon. Two and eight dropped the pass. It was a first down. Brought back because of holding. So let's see if Oregon can, can clean that up a little bit on offense. Second down and ten. Fake to LeMichael. Now they throw it out to the flat. It's not a good throw behind D.J. Davis. Second down and 10. And there, D.J. Davis was open. Darren Thomas needs to make that connection. He was he's wide open. Ducks have been very good this year and really in the last three years of striking back after teams have had success. Yeah. Putting together a long drive. Here's LeMichael James. Taken down for a loss. And they're just playing a fired up football team right now. They're so excited. And Oregon struggling against it. Well, it starts up front for Washington State. We talked about in the pregame that the D tackles for Washington State need to make a stand. They have to close up those holes a little bit. They did that on the last play. Third down and 14. Didn't give LeMichael much forward progress on that play. Here comes the safety blitz. Wide open out here is LeMichael James. He has it. James, it's a foot race. James to the 50. Will he get there? 30. LeMichael James to the 10. 5. Touchdown, Oregon. LeMichael James. 84 yards. Well, number 17, Alex Hoffman, outside linebacker. He was trying to blitz again off the off the edge. Saw the Michael James out there by himself. He said, "Uh-oh, I shouldn't be blitzing." And you'll see that you can't see the the side foot, but the Michael James wide open, untouched. How do you leave number twenty-one uncovered? They had shown that blitz three times yeah. before, and a great call by Mark Helfrich and Chip Kelly to go into that blitz. And LaMichael James with a long touchdown reception. Rob Beard on for the extra point. His kick is up and good. And Oregon is back out in front, 15 to 14, with 2.48 to go here in the first quarter. Again, you have to know where the best football player on the field is at all times, number 21, LaMichael James. And if the defense doesn't know where 21 is, then you're beat already before the ball snapped. When they started out, Dion Buchanan had the angle on him, and by the time they got to the 20, he was four yards behind him. Well, LaMichael's a track guy. He ran track, and you saw LaMichael James started to relax as he started to run. A lot of running backs, when they start to have a breakaway, when they start getting tired, they start to panic. Their head goes way back. They arch their back. You didn't see that from LaMichael James. There's the punch back we were talking about, the $6 burger scoring drive presented by Carl's Jr. Three plays, 80 yards, 52 seconds. That takes a little bit of wind out of this Martin Stadium crowd. A third and 15. Going to get the ball back to now you're behind. Well, <laughs> well now you're starting over. Okay, a, a new ball game. 15 to 14. Let's, let's start this thing over and start it right. But you can't take away how Washington State is playing right now, Joe. They're playing lights out. No, they're playing great. They're, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. They are playing with a lot of emotion and enthusiasm, and they're going to play hard all the way. 
Beard's kick high. Taken at the six yard line. Near side, a good tackle from behind. Scott Grady. Scott Grady playing both sides of special teams. Winston takes it to the 22. Nice to see a local kid from Tiger High School getting in there and making some plays for this Oregon football team. So, Anthony, the Cougars have had success running the ball to the right side and yeah. throwing the ball to the right side. They've done everything over on the right side. Well, they're going towards Turner's side of the ball when they run the football. See if they keep doing that again. But Deion Jordan, number 96, is in the game for Turner now. So let's see if that changes anything. Two changes the play. They're going to look and throw back over the middle. Top. That's playing that soft zone, and they're finding the holes. Great job by Tool scanning the field. First option, second option, and it went to his third option. South Carolina with a two touchdown lead against number one Alabama. That's what business to take care of here, though. Instead of worrying about that. Cougars will run the ball out here, pick up a couple of yards. Whistle. The whistle just blew, and then the flag comes out, Anthony. On Three Eddie flags Pleasant. come down. Eddie Pleasant. Eddie, Eddie is a guy that has to control his emotions. Away from the ball, number 11 for the defense, for the Ducks. They always will catch the guy hitting second, hitting back. So this was not on the tackle. This was no. somewhere else. Yeah. There might be two penalties on the play. After the play, dead ball, personal foul, number 55 offense, dead ball, personal foul, number 11 defense, penalties offset, second down. So they caught them both this time. <laughs> well, Eddie got lucky with that one because he was the second guy to hit. But he hit back, I believe. Got to control your emotions. Look to the right of your screen. Number 55 tries to make a block, and you can't see it here. It's just off the outside of that. So it'll be second down and seven for the Cougars. Tools had time to throw. And as you mentioned, Anthony, they've run the ball enough. Screen pass. Now he looks and delivers. Another strike. Again, they're just sitting down underneath yeah. the zone. Third and, third and a yard and a half coming up. Morgan's playing a little zone underneath with the linebackers and Tools finding that open area. The receivers are doing a good job also finding that open spot, that open area, and just sitting, knowing that, okay, we're, they're playing zone, not man. I'm going to sit and wait for the football. Full backfield here for the Cougars on third and a yard and a half. And the stop is made short of the first down. It'll be fourth and a yard. And then will Washington State want to gamble here on fourth and a yard? Well, I think you have to play smart here. I mean, still a lot of time left in the game. It's a great job by the attacking defense of Oregon getting into that gap. You know that with this Oregon offense, if you give them the ball right there, Anthony, it's what the, the percentages go way up. Well, in Oregon's defense, very good defense. They're attacking defense, and you don't want to take a chance. But you also got to be careful of the fake punt here as well. Two receivers on each side, so a very unusual punt formation. See if the Cougars go for fake. They'll kick it. Very high kick. Cliff Harris takes it at the 10. Harris gets through and spins away. And Harris to the 14. And again, Oregon will start from deep in their own territory. <laughs> 47 yards for Reed Forrest, the conference best punter. Yeah, Forrest can punt that football. Did a great job allowing his coverage teams to get down there. Not allowing Cliff Harris to make a good return. Clouds starting to thicken up a little bit here as we look out west. Again, the potential of some rain here in Pullman today. It's a beautiful morning. There's your look out west. Over the wheat fields here in the Palouse.
James up the middle. Head of steam. Picks up six on the play. Good push that time. Well, it was a great push on the inside. And when you're talking about LaMichael James carrying the football, they're going to keep giving him the football inside, 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 and then he may break one. Ducks go. Cougars weren't ready. Here's Thomas. Wide open is D.J. Davis down here, and he doesn't get to it. I think Thomas threw it just a little too late. Yeah, he did. He saw D.J. Davis running a little bit too late. He was looking for the shallow stuff. So that'll be the end of the first quarter. A lot of drama here in Pullman. The Ducks lead it by one here with the ball. Third and three coming up when we start the second quarter. You told us what you wanted when shopping for a car online. And so here it is. Right now, at Beaverton Toyota, take 0% for 60 months or up to 3,000 cash back on a new Toyota Tundra. Beaverton Toyota. Sandwich lady, 2 o'clock. Oh. oh. Hey. 5.50. Actually, we're all good today, sandwich lady. We love your chicken sandwiches, but Taco Bell's got chicken flatbread sandwiches for under a buck. So. 5.50. No. 5.50. Under a buck. You don't scare me. It's under a buck, and not everyone's happy about it. The new chicken flatbread sandwich. Warm flatbread, flame grilled chicken, and melty cheese. Only a Taco Bell. Why pay more? You told us what you wanted when shopping for a car online. And so here it is. Right now, at Beaverton Toyota, take 0% for 60 months or up to 3000 cash back on a new Toyota Tundra. Beaverton Toyota. Today's game is brought to you by Carl's Jr. A Philly cheesesteak on a burger. The Philly cheesesteak burger at Carl's Jr. By Oregon Community Credit Union. Nice, remarkably nice. By Pepsi. Brought to you by Pepsi Cola. Bottling of Eugene. Go Ducks. Drink Pepsi. And by State Farm Insurance. Proud to be your Oregon sponsor. Now is a good time for an ice cold Pepsi as we get ready to start the second quarter. A big thank you to Andy Moore and Eric Forrest who run the uh, Pepsi operation out of Eugene. Tremendous business for a long time and great partners of the University of Oregon. LaMichael, well, not a lot on the ground, Anthony, but he does have the long touchdown. Well, Washington State's doing a great job of slowing down LaMichael. I don't know if you can stop LaMichael, but right here, when you let LaMichael go free, uncovered, no one's going to cover number 21. You're going to get hurt by that. So big third down and three here for Oregon with a double tight end set. They'll give it to LaMichael. He works hard forward and has the first down at the 33. See, and people look at LaMichael James as a small really running back, not James that strong, but he is a very powerful running back. His legs are always moving. Quick on the ball. Here's LaMichael again. Still, still working. And now he's whistled down after a couple. It was all part of the wear down plan again with yeah. a fast pace, making guys play nonstop. The Cougars don't have the depth yet that some of the other teams have. But they're doing a good job so far. Second down and eight. And Michael into the pile for maybe a yard. I think that's Remine. Austin. Or Remine. The gentleman is in. And Michael hurt, getting a breather. That hurts the, uh, you know, Kenyon Barner getting hurt. That hurts the depth of the running game a little bit without Kenyon in the game. The screen set up. Davis needs a couple blocks, gets one. There goes DJ Davis. Can he keep his feet to the 50? If he didn't he can just keep his balance, he goes. But a big conversion on third down. Well, they keep running this screen, and the rule is if you haven't stopped the play, you keep running it over and over again. The Cougars don't have an answer for that play on defense yet. Until they stop it, the Ducks are going to keep showing that. 19-yard pickup. James back in the game. He'll take it to the outside. Cougars doing a good job running side to side. Three yards. Ducks have a tendency to wear you down, though, yeah. as things go on. 
So second down and seven here. Here's LaMichael again. This time tries to cut it back. It was on the ground. And yeah, he was down. He'll pick up about three on the play. So another third down and three coming up. And Michael's now Michael's got coming out a little a bit. Hip but. or something. Holding his back. Like just on the side, on his left side. So LaMichael now taking a knee on the bench. And that means Remini Alston in there here on third and four, we'll call it. Third down four. Here comes the blitz. Thomas keeps it. Thomas gets outside. The crowd thought he was down, and we had flags all over the place. And this one's coming back. More penalties on Oregon. And now Darren Thomas Holding comes out with an arm. Number 74. Darren Thomas is going to have to come out of the game, I think. He's holding his arm down. Ten-yard penalty. His replay, right arm. Third down. Like he has a shoulder injury. Well, you'll see at the end of the play, Darren Thomas... Darren like Thomas is diving for the ball. Maybe it's his hand. It's his right shoulder, right side. He's still in a lot of pain, and it's going to be third and 13. A lot to keep up with here. Trying to check on the Michael James. He's still on the sideline, bent over. Third and 13. Darren Thomas in a lot of pain. Takes a snap, stands in there, throws it to Jeff Mayle. Picks up a few, and Oregon, with fourth and seven, will send out the punt team. And Darren Thomas still holding his right arm down across his body. He pointed he to his shoulder. Field. I think he's got a shoulder problem. Pointed to his shoulder, so you'll have to check that out. He goes straight to the bench to sit down. So this possession... The three sophomores now, all some form of an injury. LaMichael, Thomas, and Barnum. A missile into the end zone from Rob Beard. And so the net on that punt's only 27 yards. The Cougars will have it at the 20-yard line as they look at Darren Thomas. Max, please. Good song. Great song. So, Pepsi Max has zero calories, huh? Yep. How many calories? Zero. Zero? Zero. What are you doing? YouTube. Oh. Pepsi Max. Zero calories. Maximum Pepsi taste. Pre-Katrina, we have 177 youth football teams. After Katrina, we lost field lights. We lost posts. We lost facility roofs. Sports coverage. Tune in to Talkin' Ball on Comcast Sportsnet. Featuring Ian Furness, Dwight James, and a special guest for every show. Past Blazers, former NBA and college stars. You just never know who might show up. We're talking with former Yankee World Series hero, Scott Brocious. Talkin' Ball, Thursday at 7 on Comcast Sportsnet. Welcome back, everyone. The Ducks trying to handle some injuries. Kenyon Barner is at the hospital for observation. The Michael James went down after he hurt his hip, his left side. And now Darren Thomas heading to the locker room after uh, coming up with a right arm, either shoulder or arm. See him holding it there. He just now ran to the locker room on the far side of the field. So it's going to be Nate Costa next time out. And this is a completion across the 30. 
Tool having some success to the 32. So Thomas went with the physician to the locker room, and there you see him on his way. He's carrying his helmet with the arm that he was uh, favoring, and Nate Costa getting warm on the Oregon sideline and talking to his fellow offensive players. Throwing the ball around. There's Costa. He'll be likely out there next time Oregon gets the ball. Cougars again having some success throwing the ball. This one's thrown into the zone. Complete again. There is a flag down this time. The linesman threw it. Cougars have a man hurt. The offensive line for, for the Cougars are doing a great job. Holding. Offense. Number 77. 10 yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay. Second down. Well, that's not a great job of, <laughs> of holding. But a couple of plays before, the offensive line is doing a great job of allowing Tool to scan the field three or four seconds to find that right receiver. C.J. Mazell is the injured Cougar linebacker. Again, the receivers are right in the pocket. Might have got a knee taken out. Sorry, that was Jeffrey Solomon there, Anthony. They're dealing with this knee right now. Looked like Javis Lewis, when he came in to make the tackle, kind of put a shoulder pad on the knee. Well, Michael James is up and on a knee up on the sideline. I think he'll be good to go yeah. back in the game. As I mentioned, Thomas is in the locker room, which is about a quarter mile away from here. Kenyon Barner at the medical center being looked at. Some observation. Physical game today. Last year when the Ducks played Washington State, Jeremiah Masoli was injured in that game. Here's the run. And going to lose a couple yards back to the 20. Laguan Mitts the carry. It's a great job by the defensive line. Nowhere to go. No daylight. Then you get a lot of white jerseys around the football. That's what you need. That's how you stop the run. And Kenny Rowe with his arm in there. Second down and 22. Going deep, but not enough time. And sacked back at the 11-yard line. That was Eddie Pleasant. Well, they take Eddie Pleasant, take him out of coverage, bring him up at the linebacker spot where he played last year, and blitz. He did a great job of that last year, getting to the quarterback. And they're going to say, hey, you come up, number 11. You get after the quarterback. We'll bring somebody in, Javis Lewis, to cover in the back end, number 14. Six yards. Third down, 28 for the Cougars. They spread it out here on third and 28. Best way to defend this ball, which might be a long ball, is to get there. They set up a little screen pass, and that's the tackle. They're about to cross the field, and the Cougars will have to punt now from their 18-yard line. So, again, the penalty this time for the Cougars ends up hurting them. They would have had a first down across the yeah. 40. Instead, now they have to punt based on the one penalty. It's a lot of holding calls this game with the offensive linemen. Get those hands inside. And... Just for your information, not making a statement, this is the same officiating crew Oregon had at Arizona State this year. Cougars with all kinds of action on their punt team. Big kick. Cliff Harris watches it bounce. Now he takes it at the 35. Gets by one guy. Here's Harris to the outside. Harris needs one more block. It's the kicker in the way. Cliff Harris following the blockers into the end zone. Touchdown. Cliff Harris again. 65 yards. Playmakers. Go ahead, Joe. Playmakers. The Cougars have a man down who has not moved yet. He hasn't moved at all. And look at the blocks that Cliff Harris got downfield. Then he has a group of guys, white jerseys, right in front of him. It's a nice job by Cliff Harris finding the hole. 
Cougars man all the way. Yeah, he's up number 96. It's Casey Hamlet. So that's good that he's okay. And the Ducks now lead it 21 to 14. Cliff Harris's third touchdown, returning punts this year. Every game he does something. Playmaker. When the ball's in his hands, he's going to do something about it. He makes that first guy miss every time, and it's not just a little miss. It's he, a laundry miss. And then he gets to the second level, and then he's gone. Beard's extra point is up and through, and the Ducks are back to an eight-point lead with 8.25 to go here in the second quarter. 22-14 is our score here in Pullman. The Duck Band has made their way over here to cheer on the Ducks, the number three-ranked team in the country. Could this tire be on your car? Uneven wear or worn out tread? Check your tires today. Your family's safety depends on it. And your locally owned tire factory will always inspect them for you absolutely free. If it's time for new tires, you'll find the right tires at low prices during our truckload sale. Season low prices. Plus, save up to $200 in rebates on a set of four select Goodyear or Dunlop tires. Always the right tire, always the right price. Trust what you love to Tire Factory. The game you know and love is back. It's time to play Monopoly at McDonald's. This year, one in four wins. Peel for your chance at over $200 million in cash and prizes. Monopoly at McDonald's. The simple joy of winning. Welcome back, everyone. Cliff Harris. There's the one guy that misses, and there he goes. Again, he gets to that second level, Joe. Great vision downfield. Hard to bring down. And a lot of speed. Great patience yes. at the end. Let the blockers do their thing. And another touchdown for Cliff Harris. His third on a putt return this year. Fourth overall. Rob Beard kicks it off. And the Cougars will just take a knee and start at the 20. Hey, folks, make sure to relive all the action on Oregon football with Chip Kelly. Mondays at 8 o'clock, special time, 9.30 this week. Some Blazer programming as well on Comcast Sportsnet. We'll sit down with the coach tomorrow afternoon and go through this game and look forward to their bye week and then UCLA after that on a Thursday night in Eugene. We'll talk about that on Oregon football with Chip Kelly. Join me, Mike Jorgensen, and the head coach. Oregon football with Chip Kelly. First and 10 for the Cougars now, starting at the 20-yard line. Big hole up the middle. Montgomery has about six yards, maybe seven on the play. I don't know why Washington State doesn't keep trying to run the football more. I mean, again, it helps their pass. They're doing a good job passing the ball, but if they run the football, and James Montgomery's a very good running back, it's going to really help their offense out. They've had some success running the ball. Jeff Toole is 8 of 9 already in the game. Throws it across in the air and almost intercepted on the tip by Casey Matthews. It's a nice job by Casey Matthews. Coming to get that tip. Tips and overthrows. That's why I tell my defensive backs. Most interceptions happen because of tips and overthrows. Cliff Harris had a chance to, or Anthony Gildon had a chance to, to make that interception. Darren Thomas is now coming back on the field. Nate Costa's warmed up and ready to go. They didn't have an offensive possession because of the Harris putt return. So we'll see if Thomas is going to come in or if it's going to be... Nate Costa, but they'll have to wait to find that out because the Cougars convert on third down. Again, Tool just 
I mean, it's, it's, it's almost easy for them right now, you know, being they're 8 of 10, now 9 of 11 in the air. Well, again, they're finding the zone. The receivers are finding the open zone, and Tool's having time to throw the football. Four-yard pass, pick up the first down. Their offense looks a heck of a lot like Arizona with that short passing game. They're just finding guys three, four, five yards down the field. Now they'll run it. Mont um, it's not Montgomery this time. Mitz. It's Mitz. As he picks up five yards on first down. I think they're going with Mitts, the power running game of Mitts, 230 pounds. Pick up maybe four or five yards on first down. They like that when it's second and second and five. Darren trying to warm up. Well, Michael looks like he's had enough rest to get over whatever was bothering him. They'll throw it to the outside. A lot of blockers out there. And there. There's a big hit on the outside by Javis Lewis, but another Cougar first down at the Oregon 48. Well, the Cougars were outmatched. Well, the Ducks were outmatched. They had three receivers out there right away. Receivers are cut blocking, and that is a hit by Javis Lewis. Marquise Wilson gets right back up. Cougars have nine first downs. Oregon only has eight in the game. Last year, Washington State had four in the entire game when they played in Eugene. Tool having to get away now, looking down the field, throws it deep, he's got a man out there, and it is incomplete. Boy, he threw that a long ways off his back foot, didn't he? He sure did, he has a strong arm. He's a big guy, about 6'3", and did a nice job of spinning out of that tackle, trying to take a shot. Intended for Daniel Blackledge. Tool now 10 of 13. First time they tried that that deep ball, Anthony. They've had a lot of success with just the underneath, sit in the zone passing. Second down and ten. Cougars will lose a couple yards on the run here, and that'll set up a third and thirteen. Brandon Barron. Yeah, and I'm watching the linebackers for Oregon, and they're sending a lot of people. They're trying to get some pressure on Tool. When you're trying to get to the quarterback and the team happens to run and you're blitzing, it helps to run as well. Well, you'd have to think, Anthony, they're going to look for something right underneath the zone, right around the 40-yard line. When you have to get 13 yards, it takes a little bit longer to find that zone. So you hope that the offensive line can hold up and give tool time to find that open receiver. Ducks with three down line, and now they'll bring Eddie Pleasant from the outside. He tries to get around the corner, thrown down the middle, and caught by... Wilson at the 23. And we talked about Wilson earlier that when the ball is thrown his way, he's going to catch it. Well, this is a great catch by Wilson. Diving. Getting his hands underneath the ball. Anthony Gilden just missing it. Cougars just marching right down the field. Maybe the Ducks are going to have to outscore him today. Quick on the ball. Mitz is a flag down. We'll pick up a yard. Number 99, Zach Clark, the D tackle for Oregon, is pointing at Holding. his guy. Offense, number 54. Ten yard penalty. Replay, first down. Zach knew that he was hailed on the play and was happy that the, the officials saw it. Zach Williams caught with his hand in the cookie jar. So I'll march it back 10. Washington State right on it, though. They know what they want to do. Yeah. Wilson's a fantastic player. He's just a freshman. True freshman, that. He had a big body. He yeah. was the highlight of their last recruiting class. And again, he's had big games. He went over 100 at UCLA last week. Tool, plenty of time. Throws it down the field. He's looking for Wilson and incomplete. It's a great job by Peppers, Joe, on that. They tried an out and up against Chad Peppers. They thought uh, Peppers would bite. Here comes the pressure. And anytime you throw an out and up, you got to get rid of that football very quickly. And it's a nice job by the cornerback looking at the receiver, never taking his eyes off the receiver. And was in coverage downfield to make a play. Peppers comes out, and Cliff Harris comes in on the far side. Wilson's tough to defend. He's 6'3". Big body. This is second down and 20. 
see the Ducks can get to him. Over the middle, and it is almost intercepted by Cliff Harris. Cliff. Again, he almost had that in his hands. Cliff Harris, natural instinct. You can't coach what you're seeing on the field by number 13. He goes right in front of the football. He thought this football was going to be his. He should have had the interception. But the instinct to jump in front of the football right there and almost make the play. It's a lockdown corner, number 13. Just barely got through his hands. Third and long here at the 32. Nico Grasso's got a big leg. So this is definitely within his range. He kicked a 56-yarder last week. Cougars only 20 to pick up the first down. See if the Ducks can get to him here, Anthony. Bringing some outside pressure. Down the middle. He's got a receiver out there and then complete. The official goes down. Fourth and 20. Well, well, why not take a shot? I mean, and I think he had his receiver, to be honest. He had time. The offensive line is doing a great job for Tool, giving him time to throw his football in. Fourth and 20. Maybe they feel like. They need sevens, but now they'll send Grasso out. This one's going to be into the wind, and it's going to be a 50-yarder. Like I said, he kicked a 56-yarder last week. There's nine on the play clock. Ducks are trying to get set on defense here to pre pre prevent the uh, possible fake. Here's the snap. It's low. Grasso's kick is on the way, and it is good. 50-yarder. And the lead's five. The Cougars are hanging around with 4.44 to go in the first quarter, uh, first half. We hate decisions. We avoid making one any way possible. Last week, we went to adopt a cat, and there were three to pick from. Now we have three cats. When we were ready to buy our first house... We went to Oregon Community Credit Union. Their mortgage experts had options that were perfect for us. Easiest decision ever. Now we have plenty of room. But we still need to decide on furniture. Oh, great. For whatever comes next in life, Oregon Community Credit Union. Nice. Remarkably nice. American Family Insurance is there for you. With the, even in the most unlikely circumstances, from major catastrophes to minor incidents. Whether you're safe at home or on the open road, wherever you are, just give us a call and we'll be there. Because what's important to you is important to us too. Policy. Is your coverage as unique as your family? American Family Insurance. Merlin sees a championship. I want to look ahead like everybody else does, but I want to look back, too. What do they do to get better? Somebody step up. To see everything that the Wild One does over the course of two hours, you really need the visual experience. Hee, hee, hee. Oh, there's Merlin. Make sure to catch Trailblazers courtside right here on Comcast Sportsnet. Twenty-two seventeen. Enthusiastic Duck fans, but right now, this is anybody's game. Coming up, it's our AT&T Halftime Report. AT&T is the official wireless provider of Oregon Athletics. AT&T, rethink possible. You know, Anthony, the only thing that stopped the Cougars so far is their own penalties. They've Themselves, yeah. Two penalties that have stopped drives. And they're very much in this thing, down by five. And Grasso sends this one a couple yards deep. Huff's going to bring it out. Here comes the freshman Josh Huff. Tries to get outside, but only gets back to the 17-yard line. <laughs> Scoring summary brought to you by Carl's Jr. for the Cougars. 12 plays, 48 yards. Took 341 off the clock. Grasso with a big kick. It got over by about a yard into the wind. Heck of a kick. Costa's going out there. It is there. Nate Costa at quarterback. Nate Costa is the quarterback for Oregon. LaMichael James is the tailback. So Costa's in the game. Thomas is talking with the coaches. He came back out of the locker room. So Nate Costa now running the offense. He's going to throw it. Looking for D.J. Davis and has a completion out across the 30. 
Nice looking throw by Nate Costa. Well, that's how you get Nate Costa in the thick of things right away. Throw the football. And he threw a, a dart to Davis. Darren Thomas with his helmet off and uh, still holding that arm. Steven Stanton here just down in front of us on the 50 yard line. He's not moving his arm. They throw it to the outside to Davis and tries to make a move and picks up about four yards on the play. And it, to me, it doesn't look like Thomas is going to be coming back. He uh, looks like he's in pain. He's kind of walking around like he's in pain. A bit. His right side, his right arm. But when he came out of the locker room, he was running. So it was like he didn't want to miss anything. Here's Costa. He'll pick up three yards to the 39. Good thing that the Oregon offense has is Nate Costa. And Darren Thomas can run this offense well, but Nate Costa can do some very good things as well in this offense. He's been around a long time. Big play here, Anthony. Big play. And there's an offsides, I think, on the Cougars. They're pointing at Oregon like, no. hey, we think they went offsides, but it sure looked like they went across and hit the Oregon offense. I think that was on number five, Brandon Wink Rankin, who Offside. jumped Defense, the gun. Number 89, five-yard penalty. Penalty will result in a first down. It's not like Darren Thomas came at, back out like he had a sling or anything, but he's, he's still holding his arm down. Here's another look at this offsides. Contact was made. Yeah. First down for Oregon. And here's Darren. Costa going to throw it. Plenty of time. Throws it to the outside. Davis makes the catch. Let's see where they mark it. Should be about an eight-yard pickup. They mark it back at the 49. I think they might have missed that spot, Anthony, but the Ducks will take a five-yard pickup. And again, it was another nice throw by Nate Costa. I mean, he had to thread the needles. The defender coming right there to make a play on the on the ball. And some serious speed on the ball. Big hole up the middle. James close to a first down. Cougars close it down in a hurry. It's going to be third and one. Third and a half a yard. That's the danger with having LaMichael James hit that second level. If he hits that second level, he's gone. Ducks quick on the ball. Costa keeps it, has a big hole. Here's Costa. Costa outside. Nate to the 30. Nate Costa to the 20. The 10. 5 is the end. No, he gets down to the one-yard line. They're going to mark it at the 4. Looks like he got deeper than that. And Costa comes up a little bit hobbled. I think he's hobbling because he hasn't ran that long in a long time. Nate Costa's great job with the stiff arm. Big legs that Nate Costa has. Allows him to get down the field and just short of the first uh, touchdown. Not a good spot. He spotted at the four. Ducks with first and goal from the four. Costa still with it. He gets down close to the one. And late flag. This could be not good if it's on Oregon when you're down on the one yard line. I think it's against Washington State. Dead ball, personal foul, defense, number 12. Penalty will be half the distance to the goal and an automatic first down. That's not good. Alabama with 647 to go, down by 14 at South Carolina. That's a rush the field situation if South Carolina can hold on. That last penalty on number 12, C.J. Mizell. Can't afford to do that. You can't beat yourself. First and goal from the one. They'll give it to LaMichael. He's still on his feet and he's into the end zone for his third touchdown of the day. That's the power we're talking about with LaMichael James. He was stopped at the line of scrimmage. He was able to stay low to the ground, keep his feet moving, and get in the end zone. Just power, power, power. Rob Beard on for the extra point with 2.17 to go in the second quarter. Beard trying to make it a 12-point game. This kick is up and straight through. And the Ducks lead it 29 to 17. 
And again, look at LaMichael James. Stops the line of scrimmage, bounces off, keeps the legs moving, has a nose for the end zone. So he's got three first-half touchdowns, and where we are in the game, well, Michael's going to get a lot of work from here on out, and great drive by Nate Costa. Well, exactly right. That's what I was going to talk about, Nate Costa. I mean, you come into the game, the first play of the game, you throw a bullet to D.J. Davis, and then a couple plays later, you get about, what, a 40-yard run? He's ready to play now. EA Sports brings you Duck fans on the road. You imagine they were sitting in the back of the car playing their video games all the way here to Pullman all eight hours through the Palouse. Duck fans on the road presented by EA Sports. If it's in the game, it's in the game. Not a lot to look at, Joe, on that drive from Portland to the Pullman. No. There's three trees once you get to the Dallas. <laughs> a lot of wheat. Rob Beard will kick it off. Martin and Winston are deep for the Cougars. This one's going to come down to Carl Winston deep in the end zone. So you can see the wind a little bit there on how the kickoffs are yeah. being affected. Cut extra two or three or four yards depending on which way you're going. Ducks went 83 yards, took him 222, and LaMichael with his third touchdown. That's our Carl's Jr. $6 burger scoring drive. Big 217 here, Anthony. 217. A lot of time. Ducks have all three timeouts. Cougars with two timeouts. And last week, this was big at UCLA. They scored at the end of the half and got the ball first in the second yeah. half, which is the exact situation here. They will get the ball first in the second half. This is a big, big series. Ducks bringing some pressure. Tool, and it's incomplete. The Ducks keep trying to bring pressure on Tool. I sound like a broken record, but the offensive line for Washington State is doing a great job of picking up all the blitzes, allowing Tool to find the receivers, crossing patterns, guys sitting in the holes. But when you start throwing the football around number 13, you got to be careful. Let's see if he throws to number 13, Cliff Harris side. You take a chance when you throw to a, a ball hawk. Second down, 10. They'll just rush three this time. Out into the flat and complete. Two cooling off a little bit. Some groans out there, but boy, he's played well. Well, and that's not Tool's fault. The running back, James Montgomery, that ball should have been caught. Just like the first one. The receiver should have caught the football. Those balls are right on the money. Third down and 10. And they have to pick this first down up, Joe, because you don't want Oregon to get the ball again with two minutes left in the half. Tool, plenty of time, throws it, but too high, incomplete. And they'll have to punt the football after a very quick three and out. And who's in that area again? Number 13, Cliff Harris. Now you got to punt it to Cliff Harris unless you want to punt it out of bounds. Once again, it's been a, well, I'm not sure how to characterize the first half. You, you know, it's, you have Kenyon Barner, who's uh, uh, undergoing observation at a local hospital. And Darren Thomas is out of the game without helmet. Makes you think he's not coming back. Low kick. Oh, it's dangerous it's kick. bounced that's right dangerous to Cliff kick. Harris. He's going to try to get it up the middle. Now go outside. Still on his feet. Harris turns around. Harris is still up. Now he goes down at the 47. Great field position with 148. You know, I don't know if Dare, Dare Thomas even knows where his helmet is right now. So I don't anticipate that he's coming back today, Anthony, the way he's holding his arm. Yeah, I don't think so either. But, I mean, why? I mean, Nate Costa's doing a great job. Sometimes, you know, if you have an injury, you know you're not coming back. You just change into your sweats or whatever. Yeah. But he's definitely a little pain, though. Here's Costa after a very successful first drive. He hands it off to Michael James, who follows blockers for nearly five yards. And still running. 138, all three timeouts. Again, the power of LaMichael James. And when you watch LaMichael James, Joe, he gets stronger and stronger as the, go as the game goes on. Plenty of time for Costa. Looks, throws it into some 
heavy coverage, and there's a flag down. I think it's going to be holding on Oregon, so that's going to make things difficult. Holding. Offense. Number 74. He had a man over the middle, didn't he? Yeah, he did. That's the second holding call on Darren Weems, and he came out of the game, number 74 for Oregon. Mark Asper went back into the game at right tackle, so. Second down and 15. It would have been third and five. So you're not sure how much the penalty really kills you. We'll see uh, this play. Second down, 15 for Costa. 123 on the clock, and now another whistle. Legal procedure on Oregon. Now a second and 20. Prior to the snap, ball start. Number 68, five-yard penalty, still second down. Ducks with their sixth penalty in the first half. See to the right of your screen, C.E. C. Kaiser just flinched just a little bit. I don't know if that's nitpicky or not, but he cannot move before, before the ball snaps. So. Inside screen to Jeff Mail. Mail gets hit, stays on his feet somehow, picks up six yards. It'll be third and long. Jeff Mail will take a blow. He's a tough kid, an ex-safety, played safety for the Ducks when he first got here. I don't think you can hurt number 23. That was the last guy there, too. That was it. Third and long for Oregon here with 54 seconds in the half. Costa back to throw. Throws it underneath the mail. He spins away from one guy, but that's not going to get you the chains moving. And now the Ducks are going to send the punt team out. It's a great job by the Cougar defense to hold tight, not allowing Oregon to get a cheap one. Because you come in to the third quarter and you have the football. So you don't want uh, Oregon to get a cheap score. There's a five-second differential on the clock. So Oregon, if they want to wait all the way to snap it, could make this the final play of the half. Down to six on the play clock. Ten on the game clock now. Down to three, two, one. And they go ahead and take the penalty. Took it all the way down to four seconds. Timeout, Oregon. Your first charge timeout of the half. This will be a 30-second timeout. Ducks actually take the timeout right before the penalty. Chip Kelly calling him on the sideline. Well, now, Joe, Oregon has to go into the to the locker room and regroup. In the previous games, they've come out on fire in the second half. The change here, Anthony, is now you can run a Hail Mary. Well, well yeah, exactly on right. Down. On fourth down. Do a Four Mary seconds play. to go. Maybe get a defensive penalty. Maybe you get a... Maybe you get a cheap one on the Hail Mary. You never know. And we talked about this. Talked about this earlier about Washington State Canva cannot give up a cheap one right here. And, and this Hail Mary type of play, the guys in the back end, the DBs, you know, ho hopefully they're taught when they go up for the football, not to try to catch the football, but to rake it and knock it down. When guys try to catch footballs. It bounces off their pads, and then the receiver catches the ball and gets into the end zone. So let's see if they can use the right technique in raking the ball down as the ball is coming down from the air. And it's, it's going to be a long pass. I always think the best way to defend these are send all your linebackers because the linebackers aren't doing anything. They're just yeah. the ball is going to go 50 yards yeah. over their heads. So you might as well rush them. There's Costa rolling. Now he'll set up and throw it all the way down to the end zone, and it is incomplete. But dangerous. <laughs> Very dangerous. Nonetheless, nobody was on DJ Davis. And that will take us to halftime. Wow, that seemed like it took 15 hours. <laughs> a long first half. A lot happened. We'll recap it and get you up to date. Get you set for the second half on our AT&T Halftime Report coming up after this. It's fall sale time at Les Schwab. 
Incredible savings on the tires you need from the people you trust. Save on passenger performance like truck or SUV tires. Shocks and struts, too. Fall sale, our biggest sale of the year for a limited time at Les Schwab. Les Schwab. Incredible savings on the tires you need from the people you trust. Save on passenger performance like truck or SUV tires. Shocks and struts, too. Fall sale, our biggest sale of the year for a limited time at Les Schwab. In a world of NBA basketball, there lies the need for timeout entertainment. Hundreds of dancers will take their moves to the stage. All for a shot at becoming one of 16 to don the title Blazer Dancer. For some, it's the chance of a lifetime, while for others, the dream comes to an end. Blazer Dancers, The Sweet 16, Season 3, presented by Ron Tonkin Mazda. Hey, Duck football fans, on Monday nights, check out a new weekly show on Comcast Sportsnet, Oregon Football with Chip Kelly, featuring game recaps, insider info, and the most in-depth Oregon football coverage around. Oregon Football with Chip Kelly, Mondays at 8 p.m. on Comcast Sportsnet. Comcast Sportsnet is your home for the NHL with all the hard hitting, goal scoring, fast paced action you can handle. Florida versus Vancouver, Monday at 7 on Comcast Sportsnet. For even more Northwest Sports coverage, tune in to Talkin' Ball on Comcast Sportsnet. Featuring Ian Furness, Dwight James, and a special guest for every show. Past Blazers, former NBA and college stars. You just never know who might show up. We're talking with former Yankee World Series hero, Scott Brocious. Talking Ball, Thursday at 7 on Comcast Sportsnet. Welcome back, everyone. It's our AT&T Halftime Report here at Halftime in Pullman, Washington, with the Oregon Band out on the field. 29-17 is our score at halftime. The Oregon offense and special teams doing, I think, what we thought, Anthony, by scoring 29 points. You certainly can't argue with that number. Uh, 17 points for Washington State in the first half is a little bit of a surprise, though. Well, it's a football game, and Washington mm -hmm. State came to play. And then people thought, you know, Washington State's going to lay over. No, they're not. They're no. playing, and they're hitting. They're playing good football today. Yeah, they're playing aggressively. Yeah. They're playing very hard. And, yeah. uh, you know, things go your way. You get yeah. some breaks, and next thing you know, you're in the football game. They do get the ball first in the second half. Let's take a look at our Bymar scoreboard report. A lot of crazy things happening around the country in college football today. Halftime report brought to you by Halftime Scoreboard Report brought to you by Bymart, your employee owned Bymart, and owner's choice pricing just right for the Northwest. The biggest one there is South Carolina just about to close out Alabama 35 21. So if Oregon can win today, you would think they would move into that second yeah. spot. California blowing out UCLA 35 7 late in that game. Ohio State stands to be the number one team in the country after today if they can. Uh, Watch South Carolina beat Alabama. And then a big one, Michigan State over Michigan late in the fourth quarter there. Denard Robinson's Heisman hopes taking a little bit of a hit there. And LaMichael James' Heisman hopes taking a little bit of a bump after three touchdowns here in the first half. That's our by March scoreboard report. When we come back, Oregon Athletic Director Rob Mullins will join us here in the booth. Look forward to that coming up right after this. Everyone loves winning. At Bymart, you could be a winner every Tuesday. That's why we call it Lucky Number Tuesday. Check your number with those posted at the store where you bought your membership. You automatically have a 1 in 10 chance of winning just by matching your ending number. Here's a sample of what you could go home with this month. To transfer your membership number to the store where you shop now, just stop by customer service. It's quick, easy, and free. Lucky Number Tuesday is just another way your Bymart membership means more. This Tuesday, stop by your neighborhood Bymart, just right for the Northwest.
Coast. Hey, hey, yo. You want cheese steak? Hold on. Hey, cheese steak. Cheese steak. Coming off. Coming off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, yeah, we got burgers. Hey, what's a burger? What does he want? Burger. We got the cheese steak. Yeah, yeah. That's a awesome. cheese steak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Good. Forget about it. That's the phone. What, what, what do you want? Cheese steak or you want a burger? Hey, what's he want? Hey, Pop, he wants a cheese steak and a burger on one buck. What is he? We do that? We don't do that. We don't, we don't, we don't do that. The Philly Cheesesteak Burger, only at Carl's Jr. Oregon leads Washington State here at the break. We are here at the break and uh, happy to be joined by Oregon Athletic Director Rob Mullins. Rob, after a, you know, you've been on the job now for more than just a few weeks and it's been exciting and fun and all of a sudden you got the number three ranked football team in the country. It's pretty exciting, isn't it? It's very exciting. Uh, what Chip and the team have done thus far is uh, got everybody paying attention and that's uh, fun for all of us. Well, I know I bugged you a lot this week. You did a great job at the conference level with Larry Scott and Dwayne Lindbergh to get this game on TV. So congratulations. All the credit goes to, to you, Rob, for doing that great work. Yeah, well, I appreciate you bird dogging it and the conference staff. Larry, Dwayne, and our partners at Fox were kind enough to let us uh, get this game on for all the fans who wanted to see the number three team in the country. You know, when you look at this game, I mean, Washington State is hitting hard. And you know when underdogs get a little bit of enthusiasm, a little bit of excitement, they can play a better football, and they have today. Absolutely. They're, they're, Washington State came ready to play. Their fans are fired up. I was talking to some of their fans. This is allowed. The stadium's been in a few years, according to them. So they're ready for the number three team in the country. You know, seeing the Ducks come out here today, there's been a lot of news going around. And I think the biggest thing is securing Chip Kelly for the long term at Oregon and as one of your first big moves at Oregon how does it get any better than that keeping Chip Kelly around well that was very important that was a priority he's a great football coach he has tremendous values that fit at the University of Oregon and we're glad to lock him up for a long term first year into the Rose Bowl second year ranked number three could move to number two with a win today and uh Certainly it's lucrative, but if Oregon wants to compete on the national stage, this is what you do, isn't it? Yeah, this is a top 10 football program, and we want it to be a top 10 and, and keep climbing. And uh, you got to compete in that marketplace, and we're excited to have one of the best coaches in college football. There are a lot of great, exciting things happening on campus, and not only the football program and where they are, but also the opening of the new arena. They're already to the landscaping. That means they're almost done, Rob, and uh, spectacular what the arena looks like. I know you've been in there as well, and uh, fans are really going to love this new Matthew Knight Arena. They're absolutely going to love it. It's going to... It's it's going to remind them of some of the great traditions of Matt Court, but it's also going to bring all the modern amenities and excitement uh, for folks that want to enjoy basketball in, in 2010. It's uh, nice that we won't have to keep looking at these animations that, uh, of course, have been on the drawing board for a long, long time and all the great hard work that everybody has done to get to the point where the Matthew Knight Arena is going to open. The opening day is going to be January 13th against USC, and uh, what a spectacular night that will be, national television and Oregon on the stage again, not only through football but into basketball as well. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity of opening a brand-new arena. It's going to be an exciting night uh, with national TV there, and Coach Altman and his staff are going to prepare for this season, and that is going to be one, one special night for everybody that wants to be there. All right, how about some second-half analysis? We were talking on the bus right over when we were kids. We wanted to be sportscasters. How about second-half analysis? What do you think? Well, I'm excited about uh, how we finished the half there with Nate Costa driving the team down the field, and hopefully we'll pick right up from there, get some defensive momentum, and uh, be our typical second-half team. All right, we'll see what happens when the Ducks come out as they get ready to go. Washington State again will have the ball first. Of course, it's uh, the return of the quack. Oregon trying to repeat as Pac-10 champions. More than 500,000 views already for those young men. Sup with your girl. Return of the quack here at halftime in Pullman. With the hard hits, coming through the pack 10 second up on base list, quarterback packing so clean, so... Sandwich lady, 2 o'clock. Oh. oh. Hey. 
by 50. Actually, we're all good today, sandwich lady. We love your chicken sandwiches, but Taco Bell's got chicken flatbread sandwiches for under a buck. So... 550. No, 550. Under a buck. You don't scare me. It's under a buck, and not everyone's happy about it. The new chicken flatbread sandwich. Warm flatbread, flame grilled chicken, and melty cheese. Only at Taco Bell. Why pay more? Portland, if you think all denture offices are the same, here's something to chew on. Your teeth deserve a second opinion from the experts at Natural Dentures. The nation's most respected denturists now have convenient offices right here in Portland. For 30 years, they've been pioneering new techniques and procedures and have restored over 20,000 smiles. Give us 30 minutes and we'll have you smiling again. A free consultation is just one call away at Natural Dentures, now in Portland. Hardworking guy, truck driver, he buys this rig from us. When he gets done, I've got something to say. We're like, okay. He goes, I've never been treated with so much respect in my life. And, you know, pointing out people and how they, and it was like, wow. It sure feels good when you hear people say those things. And that was way beyond, uh, they met my price. They had the model I needed. Much more substance than any of that, which is great. I think that's our secret weapon. Hey, Duck football fans, on Monday nights, check out a new weekly show on Comcast Sportsnet, Oregon Football with Chip Kelly, featuring game recaps, insider info, and the most in-depth Oregon football coverage around. Oregon Football with Chip Kelly, Mondays at 8 p.m. on Comcast Sportsnet. Comcast Sportsnet is your home for the NHL with all the hard-hitting, goal-scoring, fast-paced action you can handle. Florida versus Vancouver, Monday at 7 on Comcast Sportsnet. Welcome back to the Palouse, everyone. It has uh, started to rain here in Pullman. We talked about the possibility of rain, but now it is definitely coming down. And that will lead to a wet second half here at Martin Stadium, Oregon, with a lead here. But there are, uh, Washington State playing very well, and this is the big news in college football right now. It's a final. South Carolina has beaten the number one team in the country and the defending national champion. 35-21, Alabama goes down today. Anthony, did... When you climb this high, every game gets yeah. bigger and bigger and bigger. And Oregon with 30 minutes of football left, and they are going to have to bring it because Washington State knows they have a chance to win this game. Well, it's all about defense in South Carolina. They play great defense against Alabama. Washington State right now is playing good defense. See if they can keep it up the second half. And I think the only difference is they had a couple of big penalties, Washington yeah. State did. Yeah. And then Jeff Tool has cooled off. After starting out at 8 of 9, he's now 11 of 20. So he's cooled off throwing the football as well a little bit. So we'll see about the second half again. Oregon's defense in the second half all year has been unbelievable. They've only allowed seven points. Here's our first half highlights brought to you by Oregon Community Credit Union. LaMichael James with three first half touchdowns. Andy. Well, LaMichael James got very busy the first half, but so did James Montgomery running north and south getting to the end zone. And that's what Washington State needed. The ignite, okay, the football team, the sideline, the fans. Kenyon Barner on a kickoff return. This was a scary moment in the first half. Kenyon was injured on this play. You see, he was blocked right into Kenyon Barner, so he picked up speed right before the hit. You see it right yeah. there better. And the the force of that collision, Kenyon was out. He's now been up and standing on his own feet. He's at a local hospital undergoing observation. We do not have an update. Hoping to have one for him, just to, mostly just so you know that he's okay. I know that's what you're all concerned about and worried about. Darren Thomas... Looks very good early, and he went out with an injury as well, Anthony. And that's a big question mark now because he's not going to look like he's coming back in the game at all. But, boy, you still have Michael James. And, you know, when you lose number one, you're certainly losing something. That's the play he was injured on. Well, you're right. When you lose number one, it hurts your offense. But Nate Costa, we'll see him come in a little bit later on with the highlights. He's doing the same job. He's running the football, controlling the offense. But when you have guys like this, Cliff Harris, who can make plays on the field, get you points on the board, then it's a lot easier for Nate Costa. The juke he put on number 38, just right down the field, impatient, following the blockers into the end zone. Cliff Harris's fourth touchdown of the year, third returning punts. And then Nate Costa came on, and his first possession did a great job, had a big play in there. Well, a big play, he threw the football, but then this one, Nate Costa, he got his feet wet, big legs running down the field, gets a long one, almost got to the end zone, and you thought he hurt himself a little bit, but he came up and they finished the play by getting a touchdown. Yeah, LaMichael gets in the end zone, that gave Oregon their biggest lead of the game, and that's where it sits at halftime. Oregon had one more opportunity there at the end of the first half. 
And we're not able to move the ball and get a first down. The Cougars, again, will have it to start. Halftime stats brought to you by Oregon Community Credit Union. Ask about competitive loan rates at Oregon Community Credit Union. Nice. Remarkably nice. And here's your first half stats, Anthony, brought to you by Bud Light. And, uh, you know, 312 yards of offense. I mean, that's that's great. Well, one it, half. it is. But I like the positive for, for Washington State. No turnovers. They're protecting the football. And, and Oregon comes into the game with a lot of turnovers. But Washington State's not giving up the football. Halftime stats have been brought to you by Bud Light. Sure sign of a good time. Bud Light, here we go. We're about ready for the second half as the fans start to cover up with a little bit of a rain shower passing through here. 29-17, the Ducks lead it. Save $523. 16 minutes could save you 16%. Come on. Isn't it time an auto insurer gave it to you straight? That's why you should talk to State Farm. But not yet. First talk to any one of the 40 million drivers who already have State Farm. 40 million. Yeah, that's more than Geico and Progressive combined. By a lot. 40 million drivers, more savings, and discounts up to 40%. Where else are you going to get discounts like that? Call an agent at 1-800-STATE-FARM or go online. Moby Dick. Searching for Moby Dick. AT&T and BlackBerry have teamed up to evolve the smartphone. AT&T. Rethink possible. There are 380,000 NCAA student-athletes. And most of us, and most of will, us go will go pro. pro in something, something other, than, other sports. than sports. In something other than sports. To learn more, go to NCAA.org. Tonight's game is brought to you by American Family Insurance. Visit AmFam.com or call 1-800-MY-AMFAM today. By AT&T. AT&T, rethink possible. By Vimart, just right for the Northwest. And by Bud Light, the sure sign of a good time. Here we go. For Andrew Luck. Time to hand the ball off. Taylor's hit. A couple yards in the third quarter. They'll run the option. Thomas. Nice fake. Into the end zone. Darren Thomas. Six-yard touchdown run. Luck quick to the outside. Luke breaks the tackle and gets the first down. No, the ball's loose. It's motion. Love like the Saints. Touchdown. Luck two guys and they get to it. Big hole, first down and more! There he goes! LeMichael! A showstopper for LeMichael Day! So last week, Oregon with a big second half against the Stanford Cardinal to beat the number nine team in the country, climbing all the way to number three. And now the second half in a game here in Pullman, 29 to 17 against Washington State. A lot of work to do here in the second half, and Cliff Harris leading the way. Three times he's returned touchdowns, returned punts to touchdowns, started against New Mexico. Joe, anytime the ball's in his hands, uh, he's dangerous. 
He has the ability to use his speed, his great vision as a punt returner. Uh, you know, you can use him as a receiver, as a running back, because he knows how to get down the field. He knows how to get in the end zone. And we haven't seen him with an interception for a touchdown return, which is all the punt returns. But also, look at the blocking down the field on the punt return. Nice job by the punt return team helping Cliff Harris get in, into the end zone. He's also played good defense, knocking oh, yeah. down a couple of passes. And he's been matching up against Marquise, the big receiver for Washington State. And he's pretty much shut him down. I think Marquise only has, what, he has yep. uh, three catches for 47 yards. And that one was the long catch that he had. It was a great catch, great diving catch. But Cliff Harris is going to be covering the, the best receiver on the field. He's a lockdown corner, and that's nice to have. And then it's nice to have number seven, Nate Costa, as your backup come in and run the offense and, and, and run it very well. That's one thing about Nate Costa. He's not afraid to run the football, Anthony, no, by any stretch. And believe it or not, he had a faster 40 time than Darren Thomas in yeah. a straight-ahead 40, and you saw it on that run. Well, he's and, a fast runner. And Darren Thomas weighs 210 pounds, so he's not a small quarterback. Fans, now it's time for today's trivia question brought to you by Comcast. The question is, the only freshman in school history to lead the team in tackles. The only freshman in school history to lead the team in tackles. I think I know the answer to that one. The only freshman in school history to lead the team in tackles. Wow. I don't know that one. You don't think it's number two? Number two back in the uh, mid-80s? Doug Judge? No. <laughs> number Man. two. What are you, number two, Anthony? I'm oh, number eight. Eight, number eight. What am I <laughs> you said number two. It, Doug could, Judge. it could be Doug Judge. <laughs> it wasn't me. Was it me? No, it wasn't me. Doug Judge went on to be an actor. <laughs> yeah. He's in Los Angeles acting. Well, he was a freshman All-American. He was. And so I thought maybe it's Doug Judge. So when could you be said, number when you eight. Said two. I'm just covering myself. You're number eight, of course. How can I forget? <laughs> Driving around in your RX-7. <laughs> you got me. That would be cool. <laughs> yeah, my, it's, it's, it could be Doug Judge. It could be Anthony Newman. Huh, only freshman to lead in tackles. That's a good one. I'm, I'm not sure. I think it's got to be a linebacker or safety. Yeah, you're That's right. why I think it might be you. It has to be a linebacker. I got to think about that one, Joe. Uh, yeah, I think you're being modest. I think no, you might think. It's not me. <laughs> I missed too many tackles. <laughs> so the Ducks will kick it off here to start the second half. A lot of the crowd has not come back into the stadium yet. And this kick from Beard is going to be six yards deep. So we have an update on Kenyon Barner for you, because I know you're concerned and worried about that. We have a report that he's alert and in stable condition at a Pullman hospital, Pullman Regional Hospital right now. They say his outlook is good. So uh, that's great news. They're just going to take care of him and make sure to keep looking at him there. Um, I would, I would think they might keep him overnight just yeah. to make sure. Yeah. But that's a very good uh, report for Kenyon Barner after a, just a massive hit. A weird set of circumstances. Cougars go out to Marquise, and Thomas Jackson pulls him over his shoulder for the first down. And the Cougars move the ball on first down. They mark it right at the 30. Tool was very hot early, Anthony, and then he cooled off. Had some balls dropped? Well, yeah, I think he cooled off because the receivers dropped some balls that were right in their hands. So otherwise, he, he would still be hot. He still has the rhythm. First and 10 for Washington State. A lot of pressure this time. They'll run it on first down and pick up three yards. Crowd very late getting back in the stadium. Here, the rain shower might have sent some folks out. I see the tailgate parties out here outside the stadium still have folks in them. Three yards the play from the 21 James Second down at seven. Ducks trying to get out of Pullman. Quick throw to the outside. Ducks run pretty well out there. And running out of bounds. Leading receiver on the day, Karstetter. You know, Joe, they tried that play earlier in the first half and had some a first down, I think, with the play with some long yards. And this time's a nice job by Anthony Gilden, the outside corner, getting out there and making a play. 
Anthony Gilden came off the field limping. So Cliff Harris goes back out to match up with Marquise Wilson. He's given him a little bit of a cushion. Third down and seven. Trying to get to him over the middle and incomplete. It was right there to be caught. And it would have been a first down, but Jeffrey Solomon just lost his focus at the last second. Now the Cougars with a quick three and out here. Or not a three and out. They had one first down, yeah. then a three and out. Well, a great throw again by Jeff Tool. I mean, he's doing a nice job finding the receiver, putting it on the money. And those are missed opportunities by Washington State. Now if Oregon goes down and scores, that hurts. It hurts, it hurts, the, uh, hurts the team. Fourth down and seven. They'll go to the straight punt. Forrest skies the ball. Cliff Harris with a fair catch. He fumbled the ball, and he got back on it. I think his own man made contact with him that made it difficult for him to catch it, but fortunate for Oregon that he was able to jump back on it. And that gets us to our first break of the second half with 13.27 to go here in the third quarter. One Saturday night, someone went through town flashing tires. Sunday morning, one of Andy Spencer's customers at Les Schwab went to Andy's house to see if he could help. You got it. Andy got in his truck and drove up and down the streets, helping anyone who needed it. He worked at it pretty hard most of the day. That's all of them. Andy didn't tell anybody no. He really went above and beyond his duties as a manager and a neighbor. I'm James Hamilton, and that's my Les Schwab story. Les Schwab, doing the right thing since 1952. The game you know and love is back. It's time to play Monopoly at McDonald's. This year, one in four wins. Peel for your chance at over $200 million in cash and prizes. Monopoly at McDonald's. The simple joy of winning. The Oregon cheerleaders on the bus all the way over here. Comcast trivia question. We were talking about the only freshman in school history to lead the team in tackles. We talked about Doug Judge. We talked about Anthony Newman. How about number 20, John Boyette? 90 tackles last year. A stud. Outside here, wide open, is DJ Davis. Makes a couple guys miss and gets the first down. Nice move by D.J. Davis, who really starts to come into his own now, Andrew. Well, you're right. He's been a little quiet the last few games, and now he's starting to play a little bit better, and he's holding his shoulder as well. He's hurt. He was pointing to the sideline and grabbing his shoulder, so let's see if he stays in the ball game. Ducks again quick on the ball here at the 40. Michael James, the tailback. His first carry of the second half. He gets tripped up right away. Usually you don't see LaMichael go down that quickly, and... DJ now coming out. He's also got his left arm kind of hanging there. And that's the same sort of look that Darren Thomas gave us when he came out. Ducks have a bye next week and then UCLA at home. Malachi Lewis in the game. Koss is going to throw it. Plenty of time. Now he's got to step up and throw. He's got a man right behind him. Nate has the first down on a nice scramble across the 50. And, and when you watch Nate, it looks like Nate's been playing the game or, you know, as a starting quarterback for the Ducks. Shows a lot of poise in the pocket, doesn't panic. There's nothing down the field. He's scanning the field, steps up in the pocket, and picks up the first down. LaMichael well, with a big push by that offensive line. He's still loose to the 40. Thought he might pop out of there. How about the line starting to get a push now, Andy? They're starting to get a push, and Michael James is getting at least two to three yards from the line of scrimmage untouched, and that's when he finds that hole. If he gets to that second level untouched, very dangerous. They'll throw it on the outside to 2-8. Two 2-8, and a, two and a, 30 to the 25. Good outside blocking by Jeff Nail. 
and his teammates. Great blocking by Jeff Mayo, number 23. We talked about this earlier. The receivers block so well downfield. Give a lot of credit to Scott Frost, the receiver coach. They take pride in blocking downfield. 81, Justin Hoffman. Also in there, blocking. He's in right now on the near side. The low bottom part, there he is. Has not been in a lot. Neither is Malachi Lewis on offense. So Ducks having to go deep today. Plenty of time. Costa going to roll. He'll just pick up what he can get here. There's a block by LaMichael James. And the Cougars wanted a penalty for a cut block outside the box. He gains five on the play. The other player that we'll have to learn about is Huff. Josh Huff, I see him on the sideline. He normally is out there a lot, too. So lots of injury and attrition today for yeah. Oregon. Second down, five. Comes a blitz right up the middle. James tries to get anything and does pick up a couple of yards on what looked like it was going to be a loss. It'll be third down and three. So Darren without the helmet there behind his teammates. James got up slow on that one as well. He's going to come out with a little bit of a limp. Remine Alston in the game. Third down three. Costa keeps it, gets away, has the first down and more. Ten, five, touchdown Nate Costa. Talk about Nate Costa running the offense. Being the field general on the field and running the football. And the speed of Nate Costa. I don't think these Cougars, the Cougar defense knew that Nate Costa was this fast. I know it sounded like a broken record, but now Carson York comes off with his right arm hanging. And he sits on the bench with the trainer. Extra point is up and good. And the Ducks are starting to extend the lead now. 30 Six to 17. Here's another look. It's a good read by Nate Costa. Defensive end was, was coming down. Nate Costa pulled the football, found the end zone, had enough speed to get to the end zone. Much faster than the Cougar defense thought he was. A nice job holding on to the football, too, when he got hit right at the end. You know, and Nate's been around a long time, Joe. I mean, he's a you know fifth-year senior, been in the offense for a long time. He understands the situation. I think he's got a bloody nose. He's a warrior, tough kid. If the Ducks can hold on and win here, they'll know they're in a football game. Andrew. Well, yeah. Carl's Jr., $6 burger scoring summary. Eight plays, 70 yards, 318. 18-yard touchdown run from Nate Costa. Nate's already got 70 yards on the ground. You kind of wonder, and there he is, Darren Thomas, near him. You kind of yeah. wonder if Nate will be playing against UCLA again like he did last year. He, he may. Rob Beard to kick it off. Every kick going this way has not been returned. It's been deep into the end zone. That one heads out as there's a stiff breeze blowing that way. Anything up over the stadium once you get the ball up. Another good kick for Rob Beard, and the Cougars will start at the 20. Oregon special teams this year, Anthony, have been lights out. Absolutely incredible. Yes. Talk about depth and yes. all the athletes Oregon has that they can put on special teams. Returning kicks, coverage, kicking has been incredible. The punting has been yep. fantastic. And when people talk football, they're always talking offense and defense, and they, and they never talk about special teams and how important special teams are. Is. Feels like the Cougars are a little bit of a must score situation here. And that's incomplete. Fans wanted a flag. Don't you think, Anthony, this is a kind of a point in the game when they need to need to score? Well, they have to do something. They don't want it, this game to become a runaway. But how do you stop number 13, Cliff Harris, from making plays? Well, it's a nice job by Cliff Harris. The crowd was yelling pass interference, but Cliff, Cliff made a, a nice play on the ball. 
Got his hands around. Ducks lead it by 19 here. And there's a five-yard penalty. A little over-anxious. Wade Kelly Ikipi. Offside. Defense, number 92. Five-yard penalty. Still second down. I think that changes the play for, well, I know it changes the play for Washington State. They're going to, again, find that zone, which Oregon hasn't really stopped here lately. Receivers finding that open area. Second down and five. And they'll run it. And have first down and more. Juan Mitz. Having a pretty good day, Anthony. Well, Mitz is the one running the football right now because Mitz is doing a great job of picking up those extra yards. Plus, he's a bigger back, 230 pounds. He's not going to take it the distance, but he's going to get, you know, at least five yards of carry. And then right there, he picked up, what, 15. First and 10 for the Cougars at the 44. Here come the Ducks. They're running right up the middle. This time it's Montgomery. He'll pick up four yards, maybe five. Mitz has 48 yards on seven carries, so good average there. You know, in that last series, the Ducks just substituted their whole front defensive line. So the backups were playing in that last series. Now the starters, Bear, Clark, Turner, they're back in the game now. Bola Cumbo is also out there right now. 25 in the near slot. Let's get back onside. Hit in the backfield and dropped for a four-yard loss. With the Grizzly. The Grizzly on the stop. Total yard number. Washington State's have all been in little chunks, Anthony. Yeah. But they have a lot of first downs for those 200 yards. As I look at it, Washington State with 12 first downs and just over a half. Pretty good number. The Ducks with 16 first downs. Third down, nine. Ducks with seven defensive backs in there. You count the deep dropping linebackers. Here comes Eddie Pleasant from the outside. Complete. And a first down. That was a nice, no, excuse me, Joe. Go ahead. That was a nice job by the offensive line. Tool felt the pressure, stood in the pocket. Long throw, right on the money. And, you know, right now, Tool's playing his best game all year. The receivers just dropped a few passes earlier, but he's throwing the ball right on the money. First and ten. Throw it to the outside. And they'll pick up four yards on the play. Isaiah Bart on the catch. And I see Washington State trying to spread the field a little bit. They'll throw a couple plays to the far right to the field, then they'll go to back to the left, back down the middle, trying to make Oregon run a little bit. Oregon defense might be a little tired. Conditioning might be a factor here. Ducks certainly look content to let everything come underneath, don't they? Andy? Yeah. Second down. We'll call it six. Here comes the pressure this time. They'll run the football. And a great play made by the Grizzly. Off the block and made a great play. And that's so important for your defensive tackles to shed the blocks and make plays. A lot of times the defensive tackles, they don't make those plays. They're not athletic enough to make those plays. Number 88, the Grizzly, he can make those plays. And that's a great play for him. Again, shed the block. One-on-one -on -one tackle. Falling down, getting blocked down to the ground and make the tackle. I think we go with the Grizzly instead of the Polar because he has that stands up, the, like the Grizzly Bear stands up. <laughs> You're going to say something. Polar Bear is more on the fours, all fours all the time. Here's Tool over the middle, incomplete. And there's a flag that comes in late. And it's going to be a pass interference on Oregon. And that'll give the Cougars a first down. Instead of a fourth and six, it'll be first down inside the 30. Be well, down to the 25. Well, Cliff Harris had his hand around the receiver. It was a good call by the official. You can't really see it from that angle, but his hand Pass was looped around. Defense, number 13. 
15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. And Tool was forced to throw that football a little, a little sooner than he wanted to because of the pressure that was coming from inside and took a shot. Cliff Harris just got caught with his hand in the cookie jar. Can't put your hands on the receivers when the ball's in the air. First and 10 at the 25. It's been a good drive so far. They'll run it. Nothing doing that time for Montgomery as he gets back to the line of scrimmage. I'm seeing a lot of penetration from the defensive line. That was Zach Clark in there. Right when Montgomery got the football, Zach Clark was in the in the backfield. That creates a lot of problems for the running game when you have defensive linemen in the backfield. Second down, 10. Cougars are committed now to this spread. You know, the last two years they tried yeah. to run more of a conventional offense, and they're much better in the spread, Anthony, than they were last year with the conventional offense. I think everybody's getting to the spread. The pressure coming. Wide open is down the 10-yard line. Solomon has it inside the 10, and they'll have a first and goal, and Cliff Harris now comes up hobbling. Well, the receivers are doing a great job of finding these open areas. I mean, there's a lot of open areas in this defense for, for the Ducks, and Tool is just picking them apart. I'm not sure if Cliff has an ankle or what's going on, but the Cougars are quick to the ball. The Ducks going to have enough players by the end of the game today. I don't know. Cliff's with a big limp, and he goes straight to the bench. Wish I could start delivering better news. So he rolled his ankle. And the Grizzly, Brandon Bear, comes in and makes a big stop. A loss of three back to the 11. Brandon Bear, he's just saying, it's all about me. You can't block me. I mean, he's getting back there so fast, so quick off the ball. An ex tight end, an ex defensive end. Now he's playing inside. Unstoppable inside. Ducks are deep into the defensive depth chart. Scott Grady out on Marquise Wilson on the far side. Tool looking towards him. Going to throw it to him. Caught! Touchdown, Cougars! Not ready to go away just yet. That was a great throw and catch by Jeff Tool. It's a great catch right here, knowing you're about to get hit. Blackledge holds on. Showing no fear. Cougars are back within 13 points. Low snap. They're going to have to try to get the two. Now they're looking to throw it. And going down back there, so they won't get the point. So they still trail by 13. Cougars are not ready to say goodbye just yet. One tribe, y'all. One tribe, y'all. One tribe, y'all. We are one people. When you choose Pepsi, you support the Pepsi Refresh Project, which is giving away millions of dollars to refresh communities across America. So choose Pepsi. One tribe, y'all. We, 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 we. Every Pepsi refreshes the world. One, one people. One we hate decisions. We avoid making one any way possible. Last week, we went to adopt a cat, and there were three to pick from. Now we have three cats. When we were ready to buy our first house, we went to Oregon Community Credit Union. Their mortgage experts had options that were perfect for us. Easiest decision ever. Now we have plenty of room. But we still need to decide on furniture. Oh, <laughs> Great. For whatever comes next in life, Oregon Community Credit Union. Nice. Remarkably nice. In a world of NBA basketball, there lies the need for timeout entertainment. Hundreds of dancers will take their moves to the stage, all for a shot at becoming one of 16 to don the title Blazer Dancer. For some, it's the chance of a lifetime, while for others, the dream comes to an end. Blazer Dancers, The Sweet 16, Season 3, presented by Ron Tonkin Mazda.
36-23 with 4.38 to go in the third quarter. This game's still very much in doubt here in Pullman. Ducks with yet another injured player coming off, and that's Cliff Harris. You see right here, he rolls his left ankle right here. That's it right there. Ouch. And so he has come off hobbling. We'll see whether or not he'll be able to return when Oregon goes back on offense. But the Cougars are definitely uh, putting pressure on Oregon to force them to continue to score in the game because they've moved the ball. Yes, they have. 17 of 28 for two for 166 yards. Here's Huff taking it at the six-yard line. Big hole up the middle for Huff. Can Huff get outside? Flags come out. There are flags all over the field. Four of them on the field. This one's coming back. And the Ducks are going to have to start from their own 12-yard line. Casey Matthews is limping off the field as well, back on the 30-yard line. Boy, at this point, Anthony, you just got to get out of here. I mean, Washington State has come back for their only victory of the season against Montana State. They were down and buried, and they came back in the yeah. fourth quarter. During the return, holding number 20 of the return team. Ten-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. Calling on John Boyette. There he is right there. You see in the back. Ducks will start at the 16. Oregon with a 13-point lead. And right now, Joe, the Cougar defense is holding the Michael James to what? Just 51 yards. Yeah, that's on 19 carries, too, Anthony. He's been came into the game averaging eight yards a carry, and today it's just about three. And here goes LaMichael. Can he get the corner? Right on cue, Anthony. LaMichael has to cut it back. He fumbles the football, and Washington State has it. A great run for Michael James, but it ends up a, a disaster. Hits the corner, great blocking downfield. Now there's a foot race. Now they have an angle on him on this time. As soon as he cuts back, it's a nice job. That was Myron Beck, I believe number 13, that came back and made a play on that. Boy, now they're in it. Now watch these stands fill up. All these fans that are outside, not in the game right now, they are going to be pouring back into the stadium right now. And they are absolutely in this football game. Five touchdown underdog. And the Ducks have 20 minutes to try to survive, 19 more specifically. They'll run it on first down. Pick up a couple of yards. But now you're giving Washington State some, some confidence. to see the light at the end of the tunnel. And momentum. I thought he was gone, Anthony. I thought he was going to yeah. go. Once he got to the corner. Second down and eight. The Cougars have not turned it over yet, have they, Anthony? No, they haven't. Tool is 17 of 26, no interceptions and a touchdown. And now they have to use a timeout to prevent the uh, delay of game. So we'll take a break here in Pullman. Third quarter, Cougars with the ball, trying to cut the lead down to six. want to spend time on what really matters. When you shop, you want to talk with an expert you can trust. And what matters to you is going to one store and finding exactly what you need. Come to the one place that has it all. Standard TV and appliance, expert salespeople, the best products, the largest selection, low prices, and of course, service you can depend on. Visit any of Standard's showrooms to find top name brand appliances, electronics, mattresses, and more. Standard TV and appliance.
Northwest Sports coverage. Tune in to Talkin' Ball on Comcast Sportsnet. Featuring Ian Furness, Dwight James, and a special guest for every show, past Blazers, former NBA and college stars. You just never know who might show up. We're talking with former Yankee World Series hero, Scott Brocious. Talking Ball, Thursday at 7 on Comcast Sportsnet. Thirty-six twenty-three is our score here in Pullman. Be sure to ensure the future success of Oregon Athletics by donating to the Duck Athletic Fund. They provide scholarships to deserving student athletes. For more information, call the DAF office at 346-5433. Some nervous Duck fans down there, Anthony. <laughs> the Ducks need to get a turnover at some point here to try to force the issue. Montgomery gets outside. Upended, but not after he gets a first down across the 40. That was a great run by James Montgomery. Dip it inside and get to the outside and pick it up the first down. That was a good tackle also by number 28, Scott Grady. First and 10. They'll run it again. Five yard gain on the play for Juan Mitz. That's big Mitz in the game. And once again, we're seeing a lot of substitutions. And the starters, defensive line, are now back in the game. Brandon Barron, Zach Clark. Call it a gain of six. It's second down and four. Run it again. And they'll get just short of the 50-yard line. They'll set up a third and a yard. Long yard coming up. Well, Mitz is running the ball hard. This 230-pound running back is he's not a starter, but he's showing the Cougar offense that and the coaching staff that he 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 can play with anybody. He's got the big legs, the power. Obviously, the Cougars have improved since their 50 to 16 loss here a few weeks ago to USC. Ducks trying to hang on here. It's a low snap, but they get the first down anyway. Good job by this offensive line. Creating a big enough hole for Mitz to get through to pick up the first down. Not a huge hole, but big enough to get the first down. Mitz, a north-south type running back. Cougars up to 16 first downs. That's the same as Oregon has. And here in the second half, they've been very good other than a drop ball that stopped one drive. They're moving the football. Looking for a home run ball, maybe. Throws it over the middle. And almost intercepted and almost caught by Marquise Wilson, but incomplete. Well, if Marquise Wilson would have caught that football, he'd still be going right now. Place Casey Matthews had a chance to intercept that ball, at least to knock it down. He just missed it. Good throw. Right on the money. I think uh, Marquise Wilson lost his concentration when Casey Matthews put that hand up. Thought he was going to knock it down. Lost focus. Second down, 10. Rain to stop for the time being. Ducks show a blitz, so Tool changes the play. They're going for the home run ball. And it's caught at the 13-yard line on a ball that could not have been thrown any better. The ball came down in Carstetter's hands. I mean, it's just unbelievable. That was a great throw by Jeff Tool. I mean, right on the money. Outside and away from the defender. Scott Grady was in coverage. A little separation right there, right at the end. This is gigantic right here, Anthony. Oregon has got to keep the Cougars out of the end zone here. With 51 seconds to go in the third quarter, the touchdown will pull them to within six. And with Oregon with Kenyon Barner and 
Darren Thomas out. There's a throw. Intercepted by Matthews. Matthews goes down at the nine-yard line. They finally get the turnover. It looked like Washington State was going back to that old play of the, the two slants, double slants, trying to get inside. Jeff Tool didn't see Casey Matthews. It's a great job by Casey Matthews sitting back, reading the quarterback's eyes, and getting the interception. Playmakers making plays. So the Ducks back at the nine-yard line now. Give the ball back to LaMichael James. After that last run, he's got 106 yards in the game, so things can change quickly if you're LaMichael James. Costa keeps this one, it's hit immediately, and picks up maybe a yard to the 10-yard line. LaMichael got hit, too, on the fake. Second down and nine. Big defensive series here for the Cougars. And that's going to end the, fir the uh, third quarter. And that'll bring us to the fourth with a 13-point ball game here in Oregon with the football with a second down and nine coming up. But that was a very good quarter for the Cougars. Lead remains at 13. We'll go to the fourth after this. Hey, what's he want? Hey, Pop, he wants a cheesesteak and a boy got one buck. What do you We do that? We don't do that. We don't, we don't do that. The Philly Cheesesteak Burger, only at Carl's Jr. For even more Northwest Sports coverage, tune in to Talkin' Ball on Comcast Sportsnet. Featuring Ian Furness, Dwight James, and a special guest for every show, past Blazers, former NBA and college stars. You just never know who might show up. We're talking with former Yankee World Series hero, Scott Brocious. Talking Ball, Thursday at 7 on Comcast Sportsnet. Tonight's game is brought to you by Carl's Jr., a Philly cheesesteak on a burger, the Philly cheesesteak burger at Carl's Jr. By Oregon Community Credit Union. Nice, remarkably nice. By Pepsi, brought to you by Pepsi Cola Bottling of Eugene. Go Ducks, drink Pepsi. And by State Farm Insurance, proud to be your Oregon sponsor. So we move to the fourth quarter here in Pullman. 36-23. Oregon trying to fight through attrition of a plethora of injuries. Casey Matthews with a big interception on that last possession. The Cougars looked like they were going in. Yeah. Margin is big because of so many takeaways. Is that the first one today? Turnover first for First one today. Yeah, and that was the right time when uh, the Cougars are knocking on the door. Great job by the experienced Casey Matthews. Ducks will start out second down and nine. Here is the first play of the fourth quarter. They'll give it to LaMichael James. Nowhere to go. And LaMichael will lose a little bit of yardage inside the 10. Third long. The, the linebackers for Washington State, Joe, are playing lights out. Myron Beck, C.J. Mizell, and C.J., number 12. He's a, he's a true freshman. I mean, these guys are, are playing very good football. They were third from the bottom in all of college football against the run. Yeah. Costa going to roll. And look. Throws it. Caught in a first down by Paulson. And he's taken down across the 25. Nice throw from Nate Costa in a big situation to convert on third down. Well, and that was a great job by David Paulson to separate from the defender and get open and be that target. Big target that Nate Costa can find down the field. Ducks are 6 of 11 on third downs now. It's 
Still waiting for LaMichael to pop one. Costa going to roll. Throws it to two and eight, and he can't come up with it. Sometimes you blame two and eight for that drop. At the same time, you want Nate Costa to throw a catchable ball. If the ball hits you in the hands, you should catch that. But did that have too much up on the football? Just throw it up there and let two and eight make that catch. But tough situation. A little high and a little mustard on yeah. it. Second down, ten. Little screen. Here's Mail. Mail gets past one guy, has the first down, and still twists and turns like a battling top. Going back to the four. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, going back to the play, Joe, that they haven't stopped. The wide receiver screen. They call it the college screen. Washington State hasn't stopped that yet, so Oregon's going to come back to that. And now you got a guy sitting on the field. He just sat down. He sure did. I mean, he just sat down. I mean, he was, look at him. <laughs> I mean, he walked back to the line, and, and then he just sat, sat down. down. <laughs> Boy, he just, I mean, he just walked straight back to the I've never seen a guy do that. No. He walked, it was like he was taking a seat for the movie. <laughs> it was gonna, It was the party in the park, concert in the park. Sit down. He walked over there. And Is there pop pop about. popcorn to go with that? He laid his towel out and took a seat. That's Bernard Wolf Graham. That's been a it, big question this year. Is this whole muscle cramp issue against this Oregon offense when the defense needs a blow? See if he comes back in the next play. Last week I gave the Stanford player the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. Said, oh, they would fake an injury. It's Jim Harbaugh coach team. And then he came sprinting out on the next play and I, it was like Lazarus had yeah. come out onto the field. Or it was like the soccer players in Europe. First and ten. James turns it up, puts his head down, and gets turned back at the line of scrimmage. The Bulls are just not quite there today. They're not there, but you got to keep feeding number 21. He is that type of player that at any time you can find that, that little hole and slip through and hit that second level. They'll give him a yard on the play, second nine. Throw to the outside to Huff. Huff just runs right into the back of his own blocker and out of bounds for a three-yard pickup. <laughs> Folks, don't forget there's a big volleyball match tonight at backcourt against Arizona. 7 o'clock. You'll see Jim Moore's nationally ranked Ducks at backcourt tonight. 7 o'clock for the volleyball game. Third down and a long six. Big play here, Anthony. On the third down. Over the middle. Caught by Mail. He has the first down and a conversion again. Ducks 7 of 12 on third downs. And it's probably the biggest stat in the game. Well, that was. And nice job by the receivers finding that open spot. Caught Washington State in a zone coverage. The experience of Jeffrey Mail knows to sit in a pocket, wait for the football. Ball's at the 42 now. It's been a good drive. Ducks started from back inside their own 10. There goes LaMichael. The head of steam. And picks up eight on the play. I mean, I, you got to keep giving the ball to number 21. When the defense starts to get tired, and if he's fast enough and still fresh, to put a lot of stress on the defense, trying to make sure those holes are very, very small. Second down, two. Here comes a big rush. Here's Mail. Mail with room. Mail has one man to beat. Cuts him. 10 5. Touchdown, Jeff Mail. What a drive. <laughs> 34 yards, Anthony. Going back to the receivers again, Joe. Blocking downfield. Another screen. Keep throwing the ball to, to uh, Jeffrey Mail on the screen because they can't tackle him right now fast enough to get in the end zone. Nice job. 91-yard drive to get some separation in the game. That's trying to make it a 20-point lead. A 
Rob Beard on for the extra point. His kick is up, and it is good. 42-23. Oregon leads it. Excuse me, 43-23. The Ducks now lead it by 20, their biggest lead of the game. At Bymart, we work hard to save you money every day on the everyday items you need and use all the time. That's why we offer you owner's choice values like these. Enjoy a Design for Living flip top water bottle four pack for only $9.99. Save $10 on a Coleman 75 quart wheeled cooler. It's just $39.77. Enjoy Pop Secret 100 calorie butter flavor popcorn for only $5.99 a pack. Save on four packs of Dunlop women's socks. Get two packs for $7. Owner's choice values from Bymart, just right for the Northwest. Could this tire be on your car? Uneven wear or worn out tread? Check your tires today. Your family's safety depends on it. And your locally owned tire factory will always inspect them for you absolutely free. If it's time for new tires, you'll find the right tires at low prices during our truckload sale. Season low prices. Plus, save up to $200 in rebates on a set of four select Goodyear or Dunlop tires. Always the right tire. Always the right price. Trust what you love to Tire Factory. Right, let's go. Yeah, I'll come in. Looks like the med school scouts are out early today. There are over 380,000 NCAA student athletes, and just about all of them will be going pro in something other than sports. To learn more, go to NCAA.org. The Oregon flag flying proudly now with a 20-point lead as the Duck does his push-ups on the field. 43-23 is our score. Number 23, Jeff Mayo with the touchdown. Carl's Jr., $6 burger scoring drive. 10 plays, 91 yards, 343. Off the clock on a very good and important drive with two really big third-down conversions on that drive. And Nate Costa played very well. Beard's kick into the wind. Will be taken at the goal line. Winston. We're in the fourth quarter. The Duck defense already with one takeaway. That happened late in the third. And all season long, nobody doing anything in the fourth. Well, and no, and I think that has to do with some conditioning. You know, they start to play faster, stronger than the other team in the fourth quarter. And if you look at other teams as well, they shoot themselves in the foot. But then you got playmakers like Cliff Harris going up, making plays on balls that stall the offense for the, the opponent. Zero fourth quarter points allowed this year. That was a big hit. That's Bo Lacumbo on the hit. Bo is a physical linebacker, very physical linebacker. Now listen to it. Knock Bo's helmet off. <laughs> Duck defense has been running guys in and out the whole game. Yes, they have. A lot of guys that are pretty fresh right now. It's second down and 12. Low snap. Out into the flat. Diving forward. Solomon with the catch. It's third down and four coming up. Well, right now, the Duck defense is going to make sure they keep everything in front of them. No cheap ones. No long explosion plays. Make Washington State work for the first downs, work for a touchdown. It's more like three. Third and three. Pressure coming this time. Out into the flat, open. First down for the Cougars after the catch to the 32 yard line, I mean the 31 yard line. 10 25 in the game. And that was a great tackle by Scott Grady. Five-yard five catch, let him catch the ball in front of you, but when he catches the football, you put something on him. Make sure he goes down. Gino Simone. Been waiting all game to say his name. Gino? Gino Simone. He had the first down. Ball's in the 31. He'll go ahead and run it. Not a lot of room there, and... Out of bounds at the 31-yard line. There's a flag down on the far side. What do you got, Anthony? I think it was uh, offsides, or it's on the defense. Offsides. 
Defense, number 88. Five yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay, first down. Brandon Bear lined up in a neutral zone, looked like. But look at the pursuit of the defense and Casey Matthews. If you can't tell me he doesn't run sideline to sideline as a linebacker at 245 pounds, you don't know football. Ducks now with nine penalties for 80 yards. First and five to 36. Don't run it. Starting to see uh, the Duck linebackers and the, yeah. the fresh defense stuffing some things that were getting some yardage earlier. And that's Bryson Littlejohn. Now we're seeing different linebackers coming into play, different D linemen. They're fresh. They start to play faster. And I talked about conditioning. Oregon's conditioning. Very good conditioning because also they play so many players in the game here. When you get into the game and you haven't played a lot, you, you're ready to rock and roll. You're ready to show the coaches that you can make some plays also. Second down, five. Two going to throw it out in the flat. Now he's going to have to scramble. He gets some yardage, maybe a yard. He gets past the line of scrimmage. Maybe, Anthony. So I don't know if it'll be recorded as a, as a sack or not. That's a tough one for the official score. And it's funny, Joe, watching this duck defense and watching the players. They start, they seem a little faster in the fourth quarter. And, and maybe we're saying that because uh, teams haven't scored on Oregon, on Oregon in the fourth quarter. But honestly, watch the team speed for Oregon. They seem a little faster right now as a unit than Washington State. Third down and four. Cougars let lots of time go off here. They go a no huddle, but I wouldn't call it a hurry up. No. They, do, they have to go a lot faster than this. See if they go out in the flat here. Low snap again. Two's got time, though. Delivers over the middle for the first down. When he has time, Anthony, he completes balls. Yes, he does. He finds the right receiver. He understands the offense. He knows where the holes are on the defense. You have to give him a lot of credit. Very good quarterback. Ball to 46 now, Washington State. Nowhere to go on that one. Chance Number State. 22, Chance State. The carry. Trying to get some fresh legs in there. Running back to match Oregon's. Fresh linebackers. But they got to they gotta block the Grizzly, though. <laughs> if you can't block the Grizzly, you don't block him. I don't care how fresh you are. <laughs> You're not getting anything. I just have that picture in mind. Remember we watched Grizzly Adams growing up? <laughs> and that giant Grizzly would stand up. That was a big Grizzly. Arms in the air. <laughs> See, polar bears don't really do that, right? No, they, they just don't. roll around on the ice. I, I guess not. I, I, I haven't uh, came across a uh, polar bear. <laughs> <laughs> Second down, 14. The blitz coming from the outside. Plenty of time. Taking this one up high. Knocked away. Boyette got over there. Boyette and Scott Grady. Scott Grady's getting his feet wet, getting a lot of time. Nice job, but Boyette going for the football. Call that a vice coverage. Somebody over the top, free safety, number 20. Boyette, Scott Grady kind of underneath. Nice job. Cougars are 5 of 11 on third down. This one's third and 14. Only one man in a down stance. It's Brandon Bear. Here comes Brandon. The pressure coming. They throw it short. And does he make the catch or not? Then a flag comes out. They're going to call pass interference on Oregon. They're going to get the first down. I'm not sure if it was complete or not. They never did signal whether it was a completion. They are going to call it a completion, it looks like. This is just a wobbling duck who came back on the ball. And that's pass it's interference to, on Scott Grady. It's hard to say whether his foot was in bounds or not on that play. I mean, I think he's out of bounds, Anthony. And the only difference is the yardage, where the right. ball will be on the field. It'll either be at the 45. Pass interference. Defense. Penalty is declined. Offense takes the result of the play. First down. You know, I'm not sure if he's in bounds. And I'm also not sure whether Oregon would challenge it because it's about an eight-yard difference. But he, his he's foot out is out of bounds. He's out of bounds. So we'll see whether or not they whistle down. They roll the clock, and they're not going to so far review it. 
And they run the play. So there's no review of that play. They'll run it here. Nothing doing. The only difference on that play, Anthony, would have been about, you know, I'm looking at the yardage, about seven, seven yards. yards. Yeah. 651 and counting. Cougars have two timeouts left. All at the 36-yard line. The Cougars are taking a long time to try to score some points here. When you're talking about fourth quarter, six minutes to go in the game, you haven't scored yet. I think they hurry up offense faster than they're going right now. Good protection now. It breaks down. And right when I say good protection, Spencer Pacinger busts right through the middle on the blitz. S send your linebackers through the middle. Pacinger just broke right through. Really, no one blocked him. Tool was, was waiting for someone to get open, and no one can wait so long. Just the second sack of the day for the Oregon defense. Now a third and 18 again. It's another third and long for the Cougars. Which is taking time off the clock as well. So you know, the Cougars right now are shooting themselves in the foot. John Boy at the free safety is playing about 30 yards back. Pressure coming. They throw the short screen, and that's going to go nowhere. And here on fourth down, I think you can go ahead and go for it. Try to get it. Well, right now you have no choice. If the Oregon defense holds up here, not allowing the Cougars to get a first down. Cougars are taking a lot of time, and the clock's just ticking away. Now they send the punt team out? Yeah, that's poor management right there. Poor time management right there. I think it's just a concession, the, too, Anthony. The, I mean, the crowd just, is going. Unless you're going to run a fake here. You know, Oregon's going to use a timeout. Well, the Cougars try to catch Oregon with too many guys on the field. So the Ducks use a timeout to prevent the... Uh, Crazy play there. We'll take a timeout as well. With 4.59 to go in this ballgame, the Ducks lead it by 20. Tell us what you wanted when shopping for a car online. And so here it is. Right now, at Beaverton Toyota, take 0% for 60 months or up to 3,000 cash back on a new Toyota Tundra. Beaverton Toyota. When the spirit moves you, you really can move mountains. Since 1997, the Spirit Mountain Community Fund has given over $50 million to communities and organizations throughout Oregon. Including nearly $10 million to fund public safety projects. So we just wanted to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The Spirit Mountain Community Fund. We share because we care. A story of brotherly love, of beer. 1978, home brewing is legalized. 1983, tired of working for the man, the Widmer brothers quit their jobs and cobble together a brewery. Today, every batch of Widmer remains true to their goal, to brew beer people love as much as they do. Widmer Hefeweizen, the cloudy beer served with a lemon. You told us what you wanted when shopping for a car online. And so here it is. Right now, at Beaverton Toyota, take 0% for 60 months or up to 3,000 cash back on a new Toyota Tundra. Beaverton Toyota. 20-point lead here with 4.59 to go. Cougars have played very tough today. This Oregon team, so much is expected of them that even a 20-point advantage can feel uneasy for fans. I mean, who wouldn't take a 20-point win anytime? But today it's been tough. Hey, folks, this is something you got to get involved in. The Duck is in the 2010 Capital One Mascot Challenge Finals. Each week, the Duck needs your help to win a head-to-head -head matchup against another mascot around the country. Fans can vote by visiting CapitalOneBowl.com or texting DUCK to 69866. We'll have that for you here in a minute. Here's the fourth. Down play, two, running around. Throws it short. That's not going to get anything done. And it'll be Oregon football right there. 
It's a great job downfield by the Oregon secondary and linebackers. Nowhere for two to throw the football. They had to get 20-something yards for a first down, but tip your hat off to the, uh, to the secondary. Nate Costas come in for Darren Thomas today, who came out with it looks like a right shoulder injury. And Nate's come in and done a great job, Anthony. It's like he's been there forever. He understands the offense. Uh, great general of the game. The, the players believe in Nate Costa. I mean, he was fighting for that starting spot during fall camp. And uh, they don't really, I mean, they miss a lot, but yet they don't miss a whole lot. You have to also look at the supporting cast. Throwing the ball to guys like number 23, Jeff Mayo. His numbers are off the charts. 12 of <laughs> wow. 14, 142. He's got 83 yards on the ground as well. There's a Michael looking for a hole outside. Gets to the corner. And Michael turns the corner, puts his head down. And goes down hard. It's right back up. 21 yards on the carry. Well, LaMichael said this time, I'm not cutting back. I'm just running over the guy that's in front of me. <laughs> and that time, he protected the football. I'm going to make somebody pay. It was number 10, Theon Buchanan. Balls at the 34. Right now, LaMichael just faster to the corner against a tired defense. Yeah. So he can do the same thing going the other way. He's got over 200 all-purpose with his 87 receiving yards and three touchdowns again on the day. Those all came in the first half. It's Malachi Lewis in motion. Toss is going to throw it. Looking down the middle. Complete. Lewis with it. And just short of the first down. Malachi Lewis is kind of the lost senior in there as the tight end. He's the third-string tight end. Played well, very well in his young career, but kind of got lost in the shuffle. But he's a very good football player. Last year, the Ducks lost their starting quarterback against Washington State for a game. The Masoli was hurt, and then on came Nate Costa at UCLA. He's had to come in here today and has played lights out. He's a leading candidate for player of the game here on second and a half a yard. Comes the blitz. Nate just keeps it and gets the first down, I think. Very close, close. to Close. Depends on the spot. It's a good play to avoid what would have been a disaster play. First down. They signal first down, but I think it was short. They're saying first down. Pretty close. They didn't want to measure it here with a 20-point lead in 321. I think they're yelling at the officials about that. LaMichael has 136 yards on the ground. 87, or make it, uh, yeah, 87 through the air as a receiver. Ducks are averaging nine yards a play, Anthony, which yeah. is fantastic. First and ten. LaMichael almost fumbles it. And now he does. The flag is down. The Cougars have it. Covered by Dion Buchanan. There's a flag down on the play. Flag down on the play. I think it's on the Ducks. I think it's holding on the Ducks. Tripping. Offense, number 77. Penalty is declined. First down. Not a good way to end for LaMichael James. It's only 2.42 left in the game. They may have another chance to get back out there, but... He's had better days, but how do you, you know, three touchdowns. So much has happened here today, too, Anthony. It's a... I feel like, you know, the weatherman who keeps telling everybody it's going to keep raining. Yeah. You know, that every single uh, possession, there seems to be something that is not good, whether it's an injury or... You know, we had the Kenyon Barner at the hospital. The update is that he's in stable condition. It's fine. It's good. Their outlook is good for him. We know that Cliff Harris is a little bit banged up. Carson York is banged up. Darren Thomas came out of the game with Casey, a right arm injury. Casey Matthews. Casey Matthews also has an injury. LaMichael came out. <laughs> so I was talking about the Capital One Challenge. Folks, Pete the Miner from UTEP beat the duck last oh. week because you have to go to capital one bowl.com and vote or text duck to 69866 you cannot let 
Pete the Miner from UTEP beat the Duck. <laughs> the Duck's a superstar lately. This one's knocked out of the air. I mean, the Duck's on the Flow TV commercial. He's on the ESPN Game Day commercial. He's got his own stuff on Facebook. I mean, the guy's an absolute superstar, and he got beat, beat by Pete the Miner. Who is Pete the Miner? You know, he's their mascot at UTEP. <laughs> he's got that giant head. He runs around a little pick. So go to CapitalOneBull.com. Vote for the Duck. If you can get the Duck to the victory, we get 15000 bucks for the Duck and the cheerleaders to travel around the country. Here's a stop on third and short. Matthews in there. I know one thing. The Duck is in better shape than any other mascot around. I know that. Doing lots of push-ups. Well, the Cougars today, Anthony, I think you take your hat off to them. Not only can the Duck do push-ups, he can also lift the girls up in the air. <laughs> That's what's said. Look at that. Little, little assist there. The Duck's a stud. Fans like that. Pressure from the outside. Knocked away. And uh, I thought he knocked the ball away at the end there, but Tool held on to it. That was fourth down. So two straight possessions. The Cougars go four and out. With 119, the Ducks will just take a knee here and be done with this thing. Well, that's how you end the game with Eddie Pleasant, the guy that loves to seek and destroy the opponent. Coming off the corner for a blitz, still had to beat the blocker to get the, uh, to get the uh, sack. One final break to get in here. We'll take it and be back after this. Sorry I'm late, fellas. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> Whoa, 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 what is that? Huh? How come my dad wasn't like that? Well, this is just us, then. Yeah, it's just something we do. Yeah, you know, us in the so-called us. Man, I don't know. There's a lot of us. <laughs> yeah. Ask your friends what it's like to be part of a group that's 40 million strong. State Farm insures more drivers than Geico and Progressive combined. It's no surprise with so many ways to save and discounts of up to 40%. So call an agent at 1-800-STATE-FARM or go online. Now's the time to be bold. To explore. To evolve. This is who you are. Unconventional, exceptional. Own it. Be proud of it. Be open to adventure. So go ahead, create, contribute, learn, belong. This is real. This is now. This is how you change everything. This is the University of Oregon. The 271 horsepower Accord Cross Tour from Honda. Welcome back, everyone. There's a good sign. Kenyon Barner's dad is back here at the stadium talking to the Oregon coaches. He's talking to Gary Campbell there. And next to uh, Dr. Greg Skaggs there on his right, the Oregon team physician. And then in the near ground, Jeff Hawkins, who's got his back turned to you, listening to Mr. Barner talk about his son and whether he's okay. Oregon's going to go ahead and take a knee here for a couple of plays and then get out of Pullman after the Cougars played what I thought was one of the best games they've played in yeah. three years, Anthony. They, they played hard. They moved the football. They had, looking at the numbers right now, 336 yards of offense. They ran 76 plays. But it's still a 20-point win, and I know Oregon fans are going to not feel great about it. No, but, you know, these type of games you're going to have. I mean, you can't play every game perfect. you got to find a way to win these football games. And Yeah, let's not forget the kind of, you know, attrition they went through in the game. And yes. The numbers of, of injuries and what they had to fight through. And what I would say is look at all the great stuff. Look at how Nate Costa came in and played. Look how fresh the defensive line stayed. Look how Brandon Bear played today. And look at the fourth quarter of the defense for the Ducks, how they picked it up. Played a lot faster than Washington State. And again, they did not allow a point in the fourth quarter. The Oregon defense still keeping that up through six games. So a lot to like about this game. Of course, during the week, that young man's health will be a big topic of conversation out there in the uh, blogosphere world, if you will. 
Hopefully Darren's okay. He's got a big smile on his face, so hopefully he's going to be just fine. Again, there's a bye week this week, and then Oregon against UCLA at home. UCLA getting blown out by Cal today. And the final score here in Pullman, 43-23. Might have been a little agonizing for you all to watch it, <laughs> but focus on the result. It's all about the results. Oregon still undefeated and likely going to move up to number two in the nation this week after Alabama lost today to South Carolina. We'll come back, wrap it up after this, and then we'll have a post-game show for many of you along these Comcast Sportsnet affiliates in just a few minutes. Once again, Oregon wins it by 20, 43 to 23. Do you have any idea what this is used for? You can do whatever you want. My team is going to come busting through that door. Here we go. Right now. Johnson, secure the pizza puffs in the kitchen. Bert, I want a recon team on that net in the corner. And I'll come and do the Bud Light. It's the sure oh, sign yeah. of a good time. The just right taste of Bud Light. Here we go. Hey, you guys got any ice? At Vimart, we work hard to save you money every day on the everyday items you need and use all the time. That's why we offer you owner's choice values like these. Save on four packs of Dunlop Women's Socks. Get two packs for $7. Save $20 on a Magic Chef countertop microwave. It's just $49.99. Enjoy a Design for Living flip-top water bottle four-pack for only $9.99. Extra liquid laundry detergent is owner's choice priced at only $3.99 each. Owner's choice values, another way to save more every day at Vimart. Relive the drama. Relive the excitement. Relive the intensity. Relive the moment. Looking, throwing, caught! Catch an encore presentation of the Ducks football game against Washington State tonight at 11 on Comcast Sportsnet. Welcome back, everyone, here to Pullman. Oregon wins it 43-23 as they head off the field after a hard-fought football game. One thing that Washington State did today, Anthony, is they made Oregon understand they were in a football game, and this thing wasn't decided until Oregon scored the touchdown to make it a 20-point lead in the fourth quarter. And give a lot of credit to Jeff Toole, the quarterback for Washington State. He's a very, very good football player, and you're going to see a lot of good things to him uh, to come. But clearly, Washington State's making progress. I'll predict right now they're going to beat somebody this year yeah. that they shouldn't beat. It was a very good performance, I thought, by the Cougars. But also, let's focus on Oregon, too. What they did, LaMichael James, over 100 yards, three touchdowns. He had the big reception as well. And then how about Nate Costa? I thought he played fantastic today. Well, again, talk about facing adversity. And Nate Costa came in and ran the offense, and everybody believes in Nate Costa. And he ran the football as well with this big power, 210-pound running back. But we call him a running back, playing quarterback. Nice job by Nate Costa. Well, the Ducks happy today. He didn't have to do quite as many push-ups as maybe he thought he was going to do, but he's still got to feel good about what happened here today from a result standpoint. Of course, there are a lot of injuries that happened today on many of these affiliates. We'll come back with a post-game show. So many of you on these Comcast Sportsnet affiliates, stick around for our post-game show. For those of you leaving us now, thank you so much for watching. Once again, Oregon with a big victory today here in Pullman. Back after this. Pepsi Max, please. Good song. <laughs> 